man, you go crazy. Some of the most horrible luck in the world. They're not blessed, they're not prosperous, their kids don't do well, they don't get along with their baby mamas, they don't try to make up with their old friends. I'm living good and I'm selling out shows. You guys are still on YouTube talking. Man, I don't want to do none of that shit. I don't want to do none of that shit. I don't want nothing to do with Chicago. I would never do another interview with a Chicago person. I would not do one with DJ U. I would not do nothing else with Chicago people. I've grown past Chicago. Okay? I'm dealing with Lil Tim. I'm doing a Lil Tim documentary. I don't want nothing else to do with nobody from Chicago. I don't want to make Chicago friends. I don't want to do nothing in Chicago. I don't know about Chicago. We didn't grow up. We learned about Crips and Bloods. We don't know nothing about GD and BD. I don't want nothing to do. I don't give a damn about Chicago people. Them Chicago people. I don't I don't want their support. I don't want nothing from Chicago. I think Chicago is cursed. I think everybody going to hell in Chicago. I think all children are retarded. I think the babies is gonna suffer with with, with, with get cysts on their eyelids because their mamas got HPV, human papillomy virus in their pussies. Uh yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, I don't want nothing to do with Chicago. I don't want nothing to do with Chicago or California. I won't do no shows in Chicago. I won't do no interviews in Chicago. I won't have nothing to do with California neither, except Oakland. Oakland, California is the only place I visit. Other than that, it's gang banging town. I don't want nothing to do with no gang banging town, period, point blank. I put my right hand on the Bible. I swear for God as my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I would never do nothing with nobody from Chicago. Ever. That's my <laughs> right hand to God, my nigga. Yeah, I'm I don't know why to I think we're in Oklahoma right now. I'm gonna go see the crazy old man, right? DJU TV, let them know who we got in the building. Uh, your best uncle, nigga. Uh, Rat Williams. Uh, get that dope out the house before I tell your mama, nigga. Uh, and she gonna call the police on you. Uh, uh, Mr. Community Activist. Uh, who shot that baby? Uh, Leroy did it. Well, y'all need to tell Leroy to turn his ass in. Mr. Charleston White. Yeah, clean up the community. Charleston White, what you on, gang? Uh, uh, yeah, you young niggas kill me with that what you on shit. <laughs> I ain't on the mother. Thing, but I'm feeling good. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm feeling good. I just got a call from the detective uh, that I'm wanted for two felony crimes. Uh, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon time two. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I just got that call today. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go turn myself in in the morning. You have to, you have to, you have to, you have to use your weapon? Uh, fuck gang members fucking with me. Nigga hit me in the head with a pistol. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, I, I've been having a problem with the police. Me and the police in Fort Worth, we've been, we used to be buddies. Uh, and then we broke up and fell out. Uh, I went with the niggas. Uh, they went with the preachers. And so uh, I'm playing snitch in the community. Mm -hmm. The nigga that hit me in the head, in the, in, 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 the nigga that hit me in the head with the gun, he a real gangster killer. Okay. Uh, his, his name Kelvin Spencer. <laughs> uh, but he a snitch. So that book that you got in there, can say, somebody get that book for me, The Life of the Fishbowl? That, that book in there, The Life of the Fishbowl, is about Kevin Spencer and all the four tray gangster crips that was on the south side of town. It was like 50 some of them niggas. Mm. They had been killing and selling dope. And this one white man, 
This one white man, homie, uh, Officer Tegan, Tegan Broadwater, showed up in that neighborhood. And my nigga, this, this is the new Dunny Brasco right here. This white dude went undercover, just him and his sergeant, and he had $1,300 playing like he can buy keys. And he got 52, how, how many they say? 51 of the nation's most notorious crips. So Kevin Spencer was the head of the gang. He the, he the main nigga in here. So Kevin Spencer, he become the main snitch. And nigga, he the, he the G of the town. Everybody admired this nigga. I even admired him one time. He was the epitome of what a G nigga is, homie. Uh, but he broke weak when the feds got him. So he scared everybody not to tell. Then he told him. So he started telling on the little homies that done done murders for him. Didn't have nothing to do with the dope. So shit, nigga, can't nobody beat him up. So he come back to the city and say, can't nobody whoop me. So all these niggas put their head down and hit his seeds like he ain't told. I'm the only nigga in the city said, wait, that nigga snitch. Y'all have fucked that nigga. I'm playing snitch. Nigga, y'all ain't, I ain't no, I ain't, he in real paperwork. You can look it up, Kevin Spencer. So the rapping niggas, they still playing gangster with him. So I'm saying, you niggas standing on the code, but it's paperwork on this nigga, homie. So they hug this nigga and, and celebrate him. And I'm the only one in the city shaming for snitching. Uh, so, uh, yeah, nigga hit me in the head with a pistol in, in some kind of way. Uh, I'm the only one on video pointing guns. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, we yeah. know you got a history of, you know, pulling down guns. You lying, I ain't got no, I'm, I'm in character. I'm in character. Uh, but now I ain't got no history of that shit, DJ. You, you lying. Okay. Uh, but, but, but I have beat a, a case before by some gang members threatening me online, came down to my youth organization, uh, Playing gangster, I played gangster too, and I'm the only one went to jail. So that's what made me start telling. I'm gonna tell on you, nigga, because they tricked me into playing gangster, and I caught an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon against some blood niggas out of I don't know where them niggas were from, homie. Nigga named Coco Hughes and all them niggas, homie, show up and yeah, yeah, pretty cars, you know, like everybody was ready to die. Uh, yeah, and I'm the only one went to jail. So while I was in jail, I was waiting for them niggas to come through. Shit, boy, after about twelve hours. I said, man, I'm gonna start telling too then, nigga. I'm gonna tell all these niggas, homie. Because it ain't it ain't no rules in this shit. So uh, yeah, nigga, I got a call from the detective today, man. Say, so, yeah, I got two warrants out of me. Man. I just called my lawyer. Well, we know you got the bond money, you'll get it out of there. You got the lawyer money, you, you you'll be you'll be okay. Oh uh, yeah, and, and and shout out to all my celebrity friends. Just call it and say, we got you. Hey, shit, shit. You got celebrity friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a bunch of deals on the table now after that Cam Newton podcast. So Me and Aiden Ross done made up. Uh, yeah, yeah, we finna start back fucking around. Uh, and we ain't gonna do nothing gay together. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, nigga, uh, me and Cam Newton finna create youth curriculum. Uh, me and Young Thug done got buddy, buddy. Uh, me and Yak got it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I done had a change of heart since the Cam Newton program. Yeah. Yeah, like something happened to me. Man, that was one of your best interviews. Oh, uh, I, I brought I, I brought my soul to the world. I left myself vulnerable, so I, I kind of let him handle me, and I don't let niggas handle me, homie. Oh, uh, oh, uh, I, I even I, I kept myself reserved, uh, because I wanted people to see the man as well as see flickers of the character. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's what make it funny and interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, but but I wanted to tell my story uh in, in my own narrative and. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. Yeah. I had learned some things about you that I ha hadn't known, you know, prior to. Like when you talk about uh, being in the washing machine. Yeah. At five years old. You yeah, know? My, uh, yeah, my leg, uh, my bone had popped out right here. Mm -hmm. My bone had popped out there. Bone popped out there. And I had pins in, in between my leg. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that was at five years old. Uh, but but the tenacity that I had, homie, to learn how to walk with a broken body uh, in the cast, that's what made me so uh, polarizing as a kid within my family. Uh, uh, because I had to learn how to rewalk all over again once I came out the cast. So once they took the cast off, I didn't know how to walk. I had to learn how to rewalk again. Uh, two years, so I fell in the washing machine at five. I put my eye out at seven. So five to seven, I probably had at least four or five different leg surgeries. Uh, from seven to 12, I had nine different eye surgeries. So I never really went to school, homie. Mm. I, I, was, I was tutored. I had a private tutor. 
at a private white tutor. Uh, so, so a lot of the things that I know, uh, it, it was it was deposited uh, often to me from from the teachers that that would teach me one on one. So I, I vaguely remember going to school uh, in a full setting for a full year, probably up until like the third or fourth grade. So from pre from pre K to third or fourth grade, home I was a private talk kid. That why nigga ain't smarter than me. He ain't had no one on one teacher. Little dumb mother. That why he came, you know, homie. Uh, and, and back then, uh, everything was about books. As kids, nigga, we stayed in the library in the eighties. Nigga, we had book furrows. I was the kid. Every time we had a book for a nigga, I bought books, magazines, nigga, because my mama was well to do, and, and I liked to read. Uh, I, we had encyclopedias, almanacs. Mother don't know about that shit today. Uh, we had the who's who's, uh, uh, you know. So now, nah, homie, so I was a, a, a well, uh, a, a read kid. Uh, kids who read better make better decisions. Kid that can't read, he can't really make too too good of decisions. So, so you said you had a private tutor. Yeah. So one, so like you were homeschooled. Yeah. Well, I, I wasn't homeschooled. Uh, I couldn't walk, nigga. I, I had, a, I was in a full body cast, right? So I was in a full body cast from here all the way down, and I had a stick between my legs, so I couldn't sit up really. So I had to lay flat. I had to lay flat, and, and my dick was out, and I had, I had, so I had, a, I had a, 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 a pamper diaper. I was laying in bed one day. My mama was outside, and they used to, all the kids in the neighborhood used to come stand around the bed and look at me. And they'd be, oh, what's wrong, Blue? And boy, I'd be standing there feeling like a science project. <laughs> hey, man, mama, I'm looking at them motherfuckers. And then before I put my eye out, I'm looking at them motherfuckers. And I had lost so much blood, nigga. Uh, nigga, I was black as you. I, I was black because I had <laughs> lost so much blood. Uh, and I had one of them Billy D. William perms, so my heart was real straight. Uh, Nigga, all them kids went outside, and I was laying there saying, Mama! Mama! And they couldn't hear me. And they was out there laughing. Kevin! Boy, they couldn't hear me. Nigga, I said, Legs, you go get up and walk. <laughs> Nigga, Boy. I stood outside with that dick hanging. Boy, everybody was looking. Boy, what up? I became a miracle child mm. at five years old. So that's why I became like the family's mascot. Right. So labels are important in families. Okay. Every child get a label. He bad, uh, mischievous, you lying, you like your daddy. They're going to put a, a, mm -hmm. every family get a I was the family mascot. So I was the life of the party. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm going to get into some shit. Uh, so I'm the kid that can't go outside and play with the other kid because I'm going to get into some shit. I'm going to break a window. I'm going to break a bottle. Somebody for to come in here and tell on me. Boy, get your ass in this house. So I was a kid who couldn't go outside and play. I had to stay in the house with grown folk because I'm too bad. Okay. Well, guess what I'm doing in the house with the grown folk? Learning what these grown mother say. That's why the average kid mother can't talk because I grew up around grown folk. I was grown. I was managed. So when I go outside with the kid, Nigga, they ain't been hearing this shit. I've been hearing. Nigga, I've been seeing them and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, so uh, I was a kid who they thought could spell bad words and didn't know I could spell them. Yeah, I knew they were cussing. Yeah, they talking about how good dick and pussy was. I could spell that shit. They just didn't know it. So uh, I picked up <laughs> from grown folks, homie. Mm -hmm. So when I went to school, I was a little grown. Nigga, I was hunching and, and fucking little girls. Uh, them niggas were playing uh, tetherball. Nigga, we could look in the girls' windows in the bathroom from outside. Nigga, that's what I was doing. See, I was a little managed mother. I had an old uncle, so I was in the house mimicking grown folk shit. Mm -hmm. uh, so I ain't play well with kids. Why well, I don't play well with a nigga online? I'm too grown for him. So on top of that, I'm reading books. Mm -hmm. Most kids don't like to read. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing in the house? Boy, get out of here with grown folk going there. It's only so much you can do with folk, nigga. So I learned to entertain myself by reading books. Mm -hmm. So a as a kid, I discovered uh, that reading books was a form of traveling mm -hmm. because it take your mind into the book. Before you look up, you've been in four hour and you don't know you were bored because you've been reading. So, 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 so I learned to, to, to develop uh, a, a, a love for reading. 
Okay. Uh, so wherever I go, I read. If, if I'm standing in line, I'm going to look down at the newspaper. I'm going to read the whole front page of the newspaper whether I buy it or not. I'm going to read Debbie Sucks Dicks Call on the wall. I'm going to read all the shit on the wall in the stall while I'm peeing. Mm -hmm. Nigga, I read. Mm -hmm. I pay attention to the writings on the wall. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm a different kind of kid by the time I get to sixth grade, homie. Mm -hmm. But I'm like the dog who ain't never been outside and played with the other dogs. So I'm a little bit more frisky, a little bit more aggressive. Um, yeah, so, uh, uh, and I'm a brave heart because I want to fit in. I'm smaller. Uh, I got one eye. Uh, so, so I got an insecurity in the disabled that I got to try to compensate for. Bravado, -ness, bravery. The little brave heart nigga. The little nigga who all the old niggas like. The uncle's favorite nephew ain't his favorite nephew because I'm managed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know how to get away from my mama and cuss like a mother around them other grown folks. Only for them to get me around my mama and say, boy, cuss like how you were cussing. When you, boy, I'd be so scared looking at mama. And she be, he, he cussed. My mama didn't know I'd cuss like that. So what they would do is, they would say, hey, listen, call over to the house. It's cricket. Listen how this boy cuss. And people used to prank call on the phone. Boy, I used to be cussing like a mother. And boy, my mama said, boy, I'm going to whoop your ass. Because she didn't know I'd cuss like that. But my family members wanted to show my mama that the little boy bad. He ain't, cause, cause I was very charming, right. uh, like most bad ass kids do when they get in front of. And, and there's really no such thing as a bad kid. Uh, I was ambitious, uh, uh, energetic, uh, 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 adventurous. So I wasn't bad. It's just that we don't know how to identify those traits. For one, we don't even know the terminology. Sit down somewhere, boy, why you all the way Boy, that boy got ADHD, he bipolar. Well, he a boy, he energetic. He's adventurous, he go bounce around, he got testosterone. He can run till he fall and go to sleep. Why would you make him sit down? Emasculated. Y'all stop all that goddamn jumping up there, I'm gonna beat y'all ass. Now he walking on eggshells, cause he can't be a boy. Mm -hmm. When he get to school, everybody, Johnny, sit down, be still, sit down. He can't even move in school. Hey, y'all, we're not going out to recess today. We're going to go to the gym, and we're going to do song. Man, them niggas need to run and break fingers, bust their head, fight, wrestle. That's what boys do. I got to be a boy, homie, when, when I got out that cast and got that glass eye. I had been, I, nigga, I've been, I've been institutionalized in the hospitals. Uh, so as soon as I come out that cast and get that glass eye, I'm in the sixth grade. Uh, nigga, now color's coming. Yeah, yeah, uh, Bobby Brown, my prerogative, uh, he was hot then. So nigga was going from Gumby's to Big Daddy Kane, uh, Special Ed, Cool Mo D, LL Cool J. So what's uh, this, like 87, 88? Just, yeah, yeah, it's like 87, 88. Okay. 89, I was in the sixth grade. Okay. Nigga, when colors dropped, uh, when a nigga got to the seventh grade, nigga won't dick it. Yeah, nigga was on dickies. Nigga, f that silk polka dot shirt like Kwame and them, and them motherfucking MC Hammer pants with them George Joe Bertinis, with them silver and gold tips, okay. with them snakes. Nigga, f that shit. So who was wearing the dickies, though? Oh, uh, well, we was mimicking what we had saw off colors. Okay. Uh, it, it's just like, it's just like when Chief Keith and them first, when the kids first seen Ch Chief Keith and them, and that Chicago shit took off. That's what colors did. Okay. So it was easy for drill music to do this throughout America because it, it was uh, polarizing uh, and it was commercialized. 600, whatever's in BDK, all kids were saying that and we didn't even know there was gangs down here. Right. We didn't, we didn't know the depths of all these little 10, 11, 12 year old kids who were real killers and they were really killing each other riding down the street. Bow, get, nigga, we, we, we don't know the depths of this because this had never been seen before. We had never seen a kid get killed on camera on a bicycle and we all get to see it. This is, this is like the first time when they show Uday and Kusei, whose son, the mother they had never showed dead bodies before. After nine, that was the first time. So when we saw that shit in Chicago, homie, uh, that traumatized America. The gangbang shit did the same thing from the west going south to the east. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Larry Hoover them at that time, when, when, when the Crips and Bloods were starting to make their pilgrimage through America, Larry Hoover them was changing to growth and development. So there was almost a, 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 a change of structure, a change of mindset. Uh, and, and, and them, they started to do community service and they got literature, they teaching, they got understanding, they got wisdom, they got knowledge. We ain't got shit but killing with the gangbangers, blue and red. So this is coming from the West all the way through the Southern states by way of the crack. So when them niggas show up, we had never seen them niggas except on colors. Nigga, them nigga were like stars with them Jerry Curl and them funny standing legs with them big arm with them flag hanging out their pocket, twisting their fingers up like deaf people. Nigga, that shit was fascinating. Then it was commercialized. You start getting red LA Dodgers hats. Why would you make a red LA Dodger hat? They ain't red. Jordan started making red. So it, nigga started being commercialized. And then we took to it. And it became. A, a, a phenomenon, a, mm-hmm. a, a, a pandemic, almost an epidemic uh, due to gun violence. And it hadn't stopped since. So the GDs and BDs in the northern parts, the central parts, uh, the Latin kings in the eastern, they had some structure. And, 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 and one person kind of overseen a block and, and, and we did this, you got a general, nigga down here is boys following boys. Mm-hmm. Nigga, 14 got a 19 year old OG, and you think he God. Mm-hmm. Everybody got an undeveloped brain, and we all boys. Mm-hmm. Because men don't join games. Boys do. Mm-hmm. Men don't stay in the games. Boys do. So I started learning that up north in the Midwest during those times, those games had treasurers. Them niggas had treasurers where they can go borrow the money out the pot. So if Chicago had a stuck to growth and development and not abandoned those principles, uh, that would have rebirthed a whole new generation of great thinking mind black people. But those concepts was abandoned. When I started learning about Chicago, homie, I didn't know those concepts wasn't abandoned. I thought y'all was still doing that. So I would never speak on y'all. I honor y'all. I honor Chicago, homie. That's why I ran and embraced the mothers. But nigga, when I find out it ain't about growth and development, it's just like the creeping blood shit, but worse, because it's babies. It's just like the creeping blood niggas was in, in the, right after the Baloo murders, 72, 73, 74. 75 cents. Nigga, them was violent girls out there in California. They had free reign to kill because of juvenile jurisdiction laws. Almost like that in Chicago. Hmm. Uh, if I lived in Chicago, I would be dead. They don't let you have this kind of voice in Chicago. Because we're in the South, and this is really not our culture, we emulated it. The California niggas was the original Crips and Bloods. Well, you had the founders, the originals and the founders, however it went. Everything outside of California, homie, was imitating, pretending, emulating, because it wasn't our culture. That's how down here, when we get 45, 50, we can go play hub and, and, and granddaddy and walk away from all the tragedy that we've done to black people in the name of gangbanging. In California, they can't do that. It ain't that easy. It's real easy for us to walk away down here. We got a way out because that's not our culture. What you saying? You, you saying gang culture is not it's of not Texas? Su- it's not right. southern It's culture. not southern. Okay. That's what we're, we're, we're agriculture states. Right. We was introduced to it by way of crack. Right. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 was the, it was the vehicle to spread crack throughout America. That wasn't our game. We just became fascinated with it. That's why we went so hard with it. At one point in time, we were gangbanging like we were L.A. Yeah. They still gangbanging hard. We ain't. 
you know, Chicago gang culture go back to like the Al Capone days and the Italian mobs, the Irish mob. It's a spiritual thing in Chicago. It's a spirit of gangsterism that hovers over Chicago. It's a spirit of, of, of corruption that, 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 that lurks in the halls of the governments of the Chicago politician because throughout history, Chicago politicians have always been the ones to bribe and corrupt. Even here recently with Red Rafferty's motherfucker, Obama boy. So that's always been the history. Saint, yeah, St. Valentine's Day, nigga, that's always been the history. Uh, it's still mob ties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it, 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 has, it, it has a lot of different foreign ethnicities who bring their culture, uh, who don't adapt to America's culture. So niggas in Chicago are, are really like Italian gangsters in a mindset. Yeah. Now, seriously. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's a spirit that one from Chicago has to fight against growing up in the inner cities mm -hmm. because it sits and waits for you to step outside yep. and right it grabs a hold face. of you. It's right in your face every day. It, sit, it, yep. it, wait, it, it waits for you to get angry. Uh, it waits for you to have a conflict. It, it, it's a real evil spirit of gangsterism. And, and it, 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 it seems to just inhabit children now. So that's why I make reference of children of the corn. Uh, I remember a time, homie, I, I can't ever recall seeing a, a two black people fighting and another nigga kicking a nigga in the head. Wait, get up, let him get up. Uh, y'all get up, get up, uh, y'all get up. It used to be rules to hurt another black person. Mm -hmm. Put this stick on your shoulder, nigga. Nigga walked around in circles. Hit me then, nigga. Hit me, hit me, right. hit me. Right. It used to be rules, homie. Now, homie, uh, it ain't even no empathy. These niggas shooting each other mamas at the graveyard. These niggas will sh kill your baby, and while you in there sleep at night crying, they'll go make a rap video outside your house with the same guns they killed your baby with, smiling. Mm -hmm. uh, the, but... One thing I want to point out while we're talking about this is that energy comes from a place. And that's kind of what I've been studying through my own interviews. You know what I'm saying? Um, I asked these young men, you know, where did all of this bad energy come from? A lot of them say poverty. A lot uh, po po poverty breeds hate, resentment. Uh, nigga, if you hungry and you can't never get full, you turn into a hateful you become greedy. You start stealing and taking. You start at school looking at your homeboy and bringing his lunch with two Twinkies, two juices, two sandwiches. You'll befriend him to take from him. Boy, y'all didn't see that motherfucker George Foreman movie, Big George, Big Ass. That's what George was fighting. Big fat, hungry motherfucker. One piece of chicken, but his belly hole 12. Going to school, hung in the motherfucker, sitting up in the classroom, and it's a well-dressed nigga like me with three pieces of chicken. George, you ain't got nothing to eat, and ain't nobody getting George nothing. George damn near beat him to death. Turn, yeah. Look at all them niggas come from Brownsville, Brooklyn. Mike Tyson, uh, nigga Zion, uh, Shannon, Shannon Briggs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's that other nigga name? Uh, uh, Riddick, Bo, homie, all them heavyweight champion niggas, they come from, them niggas was born in the trash dumpster. Because where they sit at is around where they dump the trash. Look how them niggas fight hard. So they say wherever poverty is, uh, it ain't no God over there. Because wherever God is, you don't lack. God meets your needs. So you telling me it's a God and I'm going to bed hungry, and the only time I get full, if, 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 if my partner at school Give me his tray, because he don't eat spaghetti. So that's what I started doing, homie. I, I started noticing that my friends, man, uh, if, if their mothers didn't get their free lunch cards, because we had free lunch cards. I mean, cut you off, but so you think just because people struggling, it ain't no, it ain't no God? No. Nah. It ain't no God uh, involved, but well, they struggling? Uh, uh, well, if you believe the word of God, the word of God said, wherever God is, people don't lack or suffer. That's in the Bible. 
That if God meets all your needs, that God, if God will take care of the birds and make sure the fowls of the earth eat, why he going to let you starve? So I'm saying to you, if God is where poor people is, open your icebox hungry with no food in it and say, God, feed me and see if God feeds you. If you see if God feeds you. No, nah, we know it ain't magic. No, 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 no. I, I ain't, we ain't talking magic. We talking God. Because you have to make God manifest. God don't manifest just because you say he exists. Right. You have to make him manifest in what you believe. Just like you don't believe there's no hope, you have to believe just as much as there's no hope that there is a God. But most people believe there's no hope. How can you really believe God? Because I'm hungry on top of this, my shoes dirty, my mama getting beat on, and it's an old nigga fucking my sister. And mama them letting him do it because he got a little money. So how can, how can we go sit down and tell our kid, homie, listen, it's a God. And when he go home, homie, he fall asleep anywhere in the house. Nobody picks him up and puts him in bed. He fall asleep anywhere in the house. That's the conditions of most young black children in the inner city. They don't have nowhere to go to sleep. They fall asleep anywhere in the house. They don't have their own bed. They don't bathe before they go to bed. No structure. Most of them got a house and an apartment if it's two or three bedroom. Mama them better not be no weed smoking, black in my house, or, or whiskey drinking bitches that like to play that music. Like for them niggas to come over in the hood. Guess what? That kid might not go to sleep. He might not go to sleep at 11 in the morning, 11 o'clock at night. Because mama them like to turn up and be lit. Come on now. So when he go to school, nigga, he's still sleeping. He got a smoke smell to him. He hungry. And he don't have the confidence of the other kids because he dirty. He might not got clean drawers. Socks might be mismatched. He might got to do them socks like this so they can, yeah, nigga. So when we get to PE, he keeps shaming and tell you, y'all, come on now. Mm -hmm. Nigga, we done come back after Christmas. He still got the same clothes from the first of the school year, and he ain't got no haircut. But he got a Gucci belt. But he ain't got no clothes, no nothing. I'm come on, homie. But we don't know when you buy the kids clothes in August, nigga. In January after Christmas, they need clothes. Cause when you bought them in August, it was still warm. So come November, October, they gonna need a raincoat, an umbrella. January, after the Christmas break, they need beanie hats, gloves, big jackets. You see them little motherfuckers out there in the wintertime with school uniforms on, no jacket. But in the summertime, they got on hoodies. Come on, my nigga, that's on parenting. Yeah. When I was listening to the interview with you and Cam Newton, uh, you all talked about training, you know, training up a child. Um, so that led me to want to talk about discipline and how to discipline a child, right? Because um, a lot of these kids, they really, you know, these kids growing up fast and they, you know, they into this technology, they're a little bit more advanced than we were when we were growing up. And um, I feel like a lot of them might lack discipline. What do you think is like the appropriate way for a parent to discipline their child? Because uh, what they say, spare the rod, spoil the child? Uh, that, that's what the slave master put in there. So that, that, was, the whoop, that was the whoop your slave. The, the, the rod doesn't mean the belt or the whip. The rod is the rod of discipline. That big, the rod that you sit up with, that you hold, the rod of discipline, you point it at it. You go do this, you go do this, you go do this. The rod of discipline. I'm gonna take your phone, give me that TV. You ain't gonna do this. You gonna write an essay. You gonna cut that yard. I'm gonna deduct this. You owe me for this. You go do 50 push-ups, you go stand there count the rod of discipline. But 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 if you don't add correction to discipline, you just whooping ass. Correction. So so I, 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 once you discipline, discipline is turn down a behavior. What do you do to build back up? Come on, nigga, let me tell you something. Let me talk to you. You know, now you got to come back and teach. Mm -hmm. Just like a nigga who whoop his bitch. He can't just whoop his bitch and let it go on. He got to come back and mack on him. 
Baby, I'm sorry. Come on her real good. Put that good dick on them. Make her cry. Uh, uh, pleasure tears on top of them pain tears. I ain't gonna do it no more, baby. But you, that's, you got them, you got the Mac on your kids too, and the guys you don't spank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be because the, the, a, a lot of times, homie, when, when you got a real connection with your children, you ain't gotta touch them. The disappointment hurt they mother and ass. Me and my son, you say, Daddy, but you gonna be disappointed in me. Which one you, he used to want the whooping. Cause we can be cool after the whooping. But boy, that punishment can't come out that room. That lasts a few days. The whooping is, once a kid developed to learn pain, you down there got to beat them. But boy, you put their motherfucking ass in that solitary confinement, that 24 hour lockdown like they do them niggas in isolation, close that door in that room, take all the toys out, the TV, and have his ass, he on lockdown. Boy, that ass is screaming hollow. Cause now they got to think to themselves. They got to try to figure out what to do with this motherfucker. By themselves, they go try to play with the ropes. Uh, they got to do something. And that's what you want. That's how you develop critical thinking. Go on up by yourself, nigga. Learn to be by yourself. Cause most people can't be by themselves. They hate being by themselves. That's why they run out the door every goddamn day. Like me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, so what you, you do put me by myself. So what you think about this uh, this little kid rapper, his name Lil RT, have you been seeing him going viral? Uh, Candace Owens, you know, she she, she spoke on him. Um, but, but they say he's nine years old, a lot of his lyrics are vulgar. He's talking about getting his dick suck and I would get my yeah, I was I was that little nigga. Yeah. Because I had them kind of niggas around me. Uh, uh children mimic what they see mm -hmm. and repeat what they hear. And there's no such thing as a child born bad. Oh, uh, that's a very talented little kid. As much as I want to tear into his little ass and say all kind of mean things, because they say that little nigga was shit. I know his daddy. His daddy, his daddy is, a, is a major nigga, homie, uh, in Atlanta. Uh, Rollo, right hand man. Uh, little short red nigga. Goddamn fool when he was a little bitty boy. So he was in all the uh, born home video with uh, T.I., Bankhead, uh, Shouty Low. He, he a lie little nigga too, huh? Uh, young Thug, young partner. That's his son. He got like 13 kids. Nigga daddy, little RT daddy got like 13 kids, I think. Okay. Uh, but he a good nigga just come home from federal prison. And so I've been partnering with his dad doing community work uh, in, in Atlanta. So that's how I've been in communication, uh, talking to Yak Gotti's mother. Uh, 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 shout out to Thug. Uh, yeah, we, we go make it happen. Uh, but but now, nah, homie, uh, so so uh, because of RT's dad, uh, I, I'm taking a different approach uh, with, 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 with how I'm interacting with rappers and, and, and how I'm addressing rappers. Okay. Uh, because they took me to their hood, homie. Uh, I can't imagine growing up in the projects. I didn't. So I don't know what it's like to see a mother fighting every day. I don't know what it's like to hear my mama getting jumped on. I don't know what it's like nigga to be in a house full of bunch of saying, I gotta use the bathroom, wait, I ain't coming out, mama tell I don't know what that like, homie. I don't know what it's like to open ice box. Mama, who drunk my pension? And boy, man, I don't know what that like. Cause mama say, who, you see what I'm saying? Uh, so, uh, I'm kind of like a white juror who's sitting on the jury judging a black kid based off what they did and not knowing where they come from. So uh, ha had I not been with RT daddy, homie, uh, I done met all them little niggas. Uh, and, 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 and what struck me about these guys is, is they y'all age. They got a bunch of goddamn kids. But uniquely, they all went to federal prison. And they all ended up in some program called DARD or ARD. All these niggas, they come home with the program, with mind and actions. So uh, what that showed me and what that taught me is, when you know better, you do better. And what we looking at now, homie, these people don't know better. They don't know. Most of them can't even read on their grade level. Most of them can't read to comprehend. So uh, it's on the village. This on the village, homie. It, it ain't on these kids. 
It ain't only young niggas like RT. Uh, Candace Owens is right, uh, but she's also wrong. Uh, he just mimicking the culture. I was fucking in nine years old, nigga. Yeah, I was that little nigga. You left me around all the kids my age. Me and somebody's daughter going off the hunch. Well, look, that, and, that, that, so let's talk about that. You know how you just said it with a smile on your face. You say, man, I was fucking at nine years old. Yeah. A little boy can, can we can laugh and smile about it with a little boy, but let's talk about the little girl. They That's, smile and laugh about them little hoes fucking in the project too. Them little hoes fucking at 11 and 12 years old. You yeah. don't see the way they dancing? No, they are. Nigga, the, the way them little girls gyrating and the way these little niggas gyrating, they fucking. Because I'm thinking what I was doing in 9 and 10, nigga, when Mama Neil was having, we were having a family reunion, we having a party, right? We having a get together. So what ended up happening is the grown folks, when we in our 20s and our 30s, we getting together with our small kids. We having fun, we drinking, we smoking. We telling them kids, y'all go over there. And we all engaged over here talking, and none of us is walking around saying, hey, okay, boy, what y'all doing back there? Say, watch out, open that goddamn door. So no, because we distracted. Nigga, them homie, you have to watch kids mm -hmm. because kids' curiosity will make two girls kiss. Not that they gay, it, the curiosity, especially if they've been exposed to any sexual thing. They don't have to be exposed to homosexuality. They can be exposed to man and woman having sexual, it'll interact that mm -hmm. two boys. The curiosity, the they want to explore. Little boy in the bio tub by himself, nigga, mama get out of there, he flicking that dick. He trying to get to know his dick. He looking at it, and while he looking at it, it's tingling, it's touching. Now the little boy standing up. The girl say the little girl like to let the water drop on the pussy. That's how you get to know yourself. Next thing you know, you're jacking off. But what ends up happening is, because the adults are perverted, you put the shit off on the kid. You catch your son jacking off as a woman, you shaming. What you doing? You better not, because maybe she's been molested. So she think this is the stage of a molester. Baby, this natural. I caught me ho jacking off, what, about five years old? Little nigga jumping in shame. Little dick sticking out. I said, me ho, what you doing? Boy, he was shamed. This real daddy come in there. Nigga, it's all right. That's your dick. Can't nobody tell you can't touch that mother. But just try not to touch it so much and don't let nobody else touch it. You tell dad if somebody else touched it, okay? Has somebody else touched that dick of your boy? No, you sure? Yeah, ain't as anybody now. That's your time to talk. Not to shame him. So now he a pervert and they're jacking off in secret because it's natural. It's natural. So we not knowing how to teach these kids based off our dysfunction. And our perversion as adults, mm -hmm. because we doing this and we, we not doing this in front of kids. We not making sure the kids do this. When we used to be watching movies with mama and them, boy, close your eyes. I was a little nigga doing this with that one eye. Shit, I was peeking. Boy, get your ass out of here, cause they know I'm on peek. Little managed mother. Yeah, they know I'm managed. I've been around Nike, Jeffrey, these the 21 year old niggas when I'm seven, let me peek up under the door. Why they, yeah, let me get up under the bed, the bed humping, and we up under there sniggling. Why get y'all ass up under there? You fascinated with this shit? But we watching men and women do this. And guess what we doing? We going to go mimic it when they put all the kids together. Yeah. So you can't let no little boy watch no motherfucking rap video and them hoes dancing and shaking that pussy all day long and think he can babysit his sister, stay with all the other little girl a little younger than him, and you and he has no supervision, she wasn't supposed to be looking at that because you're activating something. You stimulating this little His mama walking around when he's six, seven years old, she got her pussy out, her ass out. Nigga, he a little pervert. He peeked so because he goes, he go look at, he gonna try to do that to every woman because he's watching his mother do this constantly. So he think women do this. Come on, homie, don't let the little nigga have a stripper mama when she coming in drunk. Come on now, man. So uh we do so much as young parents damaging our kids, we be so hard on their mother. And later in life, we forget the damage we done done. We did this. 
The same mother I'm looking at sick of is me. I'm really sick of me because what I'm seeing is him is me or his daddy. He only got our chromosomes. So when you get fed up with your kid, you're really fed up with yourself. Those are your traits. But we don't, we, we don't pull back to think that. Could you share with us a, a, a defining moment from your past that has had a profound impact on your life today? Uh, I lied on the FBI agent and say he stuck his fingers in my ass. Uh, uh, Officer Daniel Torres. Uh, they had took down my partners out of West Dallas, Monk them, the Gator Boys. Uh, and Torres had them niggas, he, boy, them niggas, they used to get them niggas black eyes, fat lips, everything. Uh, and man, man, they asked my nigga Monk. So uh, I had got this truck for my nigga uh, from, from Richard's Arlett Suzuki. Well, Richard's Arlett Suzuki, and they were money launderers. Uh, but we didn't know this. So I get the truck for my nigga, my name. My nigga was on the run. So uh, I had went to Miami. So when I came back, that's when we had them trips. So nigga was tripping. Say nothing, man, goddamn, they got the truck. Road dog was in the truck. And, and man, them bitch ass nigga tore red and them, and them pounded just trying to find Monk. They had a picture of Monk in the car. So uh, they done put a gang hold on the car. Well, you know, I think I'm a jailhouse lawyer. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, you know, I'm the nigga. I'm going to go down there. And uh, at the time, Chief Conkle, Chief Conkle was the, uh, Chief, Chief Conkle was the, uh, was, was the chief of, of Dallas police. Uh, so I go down there. But before I went down there, I went and paid off my tickets in, 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 in Waxahachie. But they used that as a, as a way to say I was under arrest. So uh, they take me to the back. I'm doing the ignorant nigga fool uh, because I'm, 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 I'm in my mid twenties, late twenties. Uh, I'm hollering and screaming. Uh, I'm playing like the police done push my head all up uh, uh, against the wall. Uh, they take me to the back, leave me in handcuffs. Uh, come out and try to talk to me. Uh, and I'm in there. Uh, that's when niggas used to, Jay-Z and everybody used to wear the button-ups with the hat cocks. Mm. I'm in that bitch, nigga. <laughs> uh, in that bitch singing, I'm so good, I wear my pants below my way now, man. In court, I looked at like a goddamn fool in there doing that shit. But at the time, it seemed like something to do. Young and dumb, right? So, man, they coming up. I'm playing crazy and stupid. Nigga, they take my ass down there to that parking garage, uh, rough me up a little bit, pull my shirt over my head, take a picture of my tattoo on my back. I got made nigga tattooed on my back. They rough have me, pull up on me, and he run his fingers through the, you know, you know how they try to feel for dope? But boy, he did it hard. Nigga, I jump. Hey, nigga. <laughs> I feel so goddamn violated. I said, man, I said, man, I said, man, he tried to stick his finger in my ass. So, nigga, when I got out of jail, <laughs> uh, they arrested me for assault on a police officer by threat. Uh, when I got out of jail, uh, I called Senator Royce West. Uh, the next day, I spoke to a guy by the name of Kelvin Vaz, who was head of the criminal justice part of uh, Senator Royce West's office. I told him what happened to me. Uh, he put me in contact with Chief Conkle. They put me in contact with a Turner Farrell. And, uh, and I went down there and I spent 12 hours with internal fire writing a 13 page affidavit on what them officers did to me. Mm. Uh, and I'm gonna be honest, I lied. Lie. <laughs> and I lied because I had a hate for police officers and I really didn't even read it. I didn't, nigga, I ain't never been mistreated by the police. Every time I ever been stopped by the police, I was supposed to be the stop. Four niggas in the car, no insurance, no driving license. Uh, weed, every, nigga, they supposed to stop four niggas in the car with their hats turned backwards. Three niggas in the back, two in the car. That's a car up to no good. Pull over, just check it out. Chance it ain't got no insurance, no driving license. That's a good call. But we as kids, they man, police are always f***ing with us. Get all them niggas out the car, I bet they don't f*** with you no more. Take your hat to the front, nigga. Take your hat off when you're driving, I bet they don't f*** with you no more. Put your seatbelt on, put some insurance on the car, I bet they don't with you no more. Try the speed limit. There you go. I bet they don't <laughs> you no more. So, so, so I don't, I got this hate, homie, but it's hate that I don't, I don't inherit it from the culture. I come from a home where nigga, we, my mama say call the police. My mama say, who did this? And then we all sitting in there, ain't saying nothing. 
Nigga, we finna get a whooping. By the time they get to the, if, if the nigga who did it ain't got the whooping fur, everybody started telling. Especially if he the last one to get it. Cause by then she damn near tied. My wife ain't do it, man. Can't my mom, can't my believe my mom. But now you can yeah, well, because you didn't say nothing in the beginning because you had a chance to be honorable. You got a chance to be honest. Nigga, I'd much rather be honest, nigga, and be called a snitch than to stand on the cold and don't say nothing and watch my mama, watch my friend mama cry because I won't say that nigga did it. Watch my nigga go to jail because I won't say I did it. I'd much rather say, say, man, that nigga told on us. You know why? Because I ain't letting you go to jail because that nigga gonna let all us go to jail, homie. I'll ruin our friendship to save you, my nigga. He gonna let all us go to jail? Man, your, your daughter gonna cry like a mother, my nigga. My, your mama, so I, I'm willing to tell on him, homie, so y'all can be free and y'all quit f***ing with me and I go be the snitch. But in my heart, nigga, I did that for y'all two niggas. Y'all know he the fool. We just love that nigga because we grew up with him. But he been getting us in trouble all our life, my nigga. I'm willing to be that friend. Mm. Yeah. And when he get killed and die and go to jail, y'all gonna come back and fuck with me. And we gonna be family again. Mm. That's how I go. Our kids grew up together. Not his kids, but our kids. We, because we was honorable. Had he been honorable, nigga, his kids grew up with our kids. It's mine, dog. I did it. Yeah, it seemed like the uh, the no snitching rule has um. It's expired. It's yeah, snitching. it's over snitching. With. snitching is cool in the motherfucker now. It feels good. It's refreshing. Till you go in one of them yards and they say, "Let me see your paperwork." Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But see, most of us don't end up in federal prison. We end up in state prison where ninety five percent of cases are plea bargain. So I don't know what my homeboy told the police when they separated us. I just know he got a little less time than me. And I stayed back a little longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, because I took a plea bargain. So I don't know what he told the police because the evidence is not out there now. You know how many niggas hiding up under that? You know how many real niggas keeping their partner secrets? You know how many real niggas keeping their partner secret because they partner some G niggas? And in some cases, they partners kind of told a little bit, but they took a plea bargain. And this nigga loved whatever they love so much, he just bite down on it and hold it inside, but he got a secret resentment at that nigga. I see it all the time, my nigga. I see it all the time. Yeah. Them fake smiles these niggas have for each other in the same hood, in the same set. You don't know we done done shit together before when we were kids. My nigga was yeah, homie. But he went on to learn how to fight, and he a G nigga, and he ain't told since then. But nigga, I remember. It's a whole bunch of them plea bargain cases like that, my nigga. Mm -hmm. Because what happened was, you was taught it, nigga. So we hanging with you, following you. We wasn't taught it. And the police really scared us. Because when we ride in the car with our mama, she just, hey, boy, y'all sit down back there. You ride in the car with your mama, she don't give a damn. Y'all still bouncing in the window. She ain't, you should, so it's a different. So y'all not reacting out of fear. It's a lot of kids scared of cats and dogs because their mama was scared of cats and dogs. Because they watched their mama be scared of shit. So they scared of shit. Or the shit their mama wasn't scared of, they attack it and bully it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, six young men on trial for the murder of FBG Duck. The trial has already started in Chicago. Uh, all of these guys, you know, being from O Block. Um, and it's been a lot of them. Uh, there's been a lot of telling going on with that case. I just said like that, you know. Uh, nobody's been able to beat the federal government. Right. Uh, John Gotti did for the longest, and, and 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 because he did for the longest, boy, they got his goddamn son just as much as they were getting his daddy. But his son was beating him too. His daddy was a hard nose. Teflon. Nigga, nigga, they couldn't get the Teflon. But when they finally got him, <coughs> John Gotti was one of the only mafia boss that wanted his son to be a mafia boss. He wanted the rest of them didn't want that. 
So he embraced his son to do it. And his son became a boss. And his son became a damn good boss. But, but his son changed. He changed the culture of, 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 of the Gotti family and really the Costa Nostra, right? Uh, I went and saw the movie when, when John Gotti was dying and his son was having to go to prison and he, had, and, and he was going to go tell his dad, I'm going to take the plea. Nigga, his daddy was mad. Take the plea, that's like snitching. That's snitching. He said, but I don't want to be gone like you was gone from us. I want to be there for my kids. If, I'm if I don't take the plea, when I come back, man, my kids are going to be gone. I don't want to do that. His daddy was mad, homie. He thought he was breaking weak. Do we ever get to break weak? Do I, do, 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 do I ever get to have grandkids, homie? Well, I said, my nigga, I want to be a granddaddy, my nigga. Y'all just let me, let, can I walk away? I got a good woman. She done helped me get my credit together, homie. Uh, she, can, can, can I walk away? I ain't never been able to have a new truck like this, homie. Do I still have to come to the hood days? Do, can, can I walk, can I break? We, I'm weak now, homie. I love a woman. I love kids. And, and I ain't, I just don't love y'all as much, but I love what we had. Can I walk away without y'all saying, oh man, will you still respect me as a man? The hood says, no, we won't. Streets don't love nobody. Your kids are your woman, nigga. Mm -hmm. So we know this. Why can't we put love back into the streets? Say, little homie, get y'all ass back to school. Say, homie, don't get that little nigga no dope. Say, homie, how much you want for that gun, little homie? None. Let me give you 500 for that gun, my nigga. Now, here go 500 for that little old rag lad gun. My nigga, let me go buy you uh, 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 some lawn curry equipment for you and your little partners now. Let me get you a lawnmower. Let me get you a weed eater, nigga. You with that big old ass gun, nigga, I'll get you a ride line more if you give me that motherfucker. Well, y'all go make some money. They'll put them guns down, homie. Nigga, I'll buy y'all a camera. I'll show you how to be the next safe chief. Nigga, you want to do like DJ you and do all these interviews for you and your little partner? Nigga, I'll get y'all a camera. Who going to be the producer? Who y'all trust? So if I give y'all $200 right now, how many of these little niggas y'all trust to hold the money? Me, me, me. Now, who do all y'all trust? They go pick one nigga. Here, nigga, you divide the money evenly. You let them pick who, yeah. But ain't nobody engaging them young niggas, huh? So they disconnected. Only thing they connected to niggas metaverse, the games. But they're not connected to what's going on out here in society. Uh... That's why they turn up every goddamn thing. They ain't got no pretty bikes outside. All them kids ain't got remote controls and, and drone plane they can fly and play with. They go, what, what they, they ain't got nothing out there. Tear it up. Steal that mother car. Ain't nobody putting us in driver's head anyway. <laughs> Kill boy, driver's head, boom. Ain't nobody putting them in driver's head, homie. They been playing Grand Theft Auto. They want to drive now. So why there ain't no driver's ass program for the kill boys? Junk for cars, nigga. We got these ragland cars, nigga. You know who won't learn how to work on car? You nigga work on this car, you fix what's wrong with it, you can have it. I got a nigga that's gonna show you. We got these cars just sitting around back here, my nigga. Get them niggas something to do. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think we do need uh, more you know, positive strategies. And uh, negative. We need some negative too. We need some say, nigga, you going to jail. Nigga, you 14 years old and you did what? Now they need to give you 20 years, homie. We'll see you around 19, look at you again, see how you did at that boy's home, and give you a second chance, depending on what the boy's home said you've been doing, these people who've been working with you. If these people say you need to go to prison, we sending you to prison. We, nah, homie, some of us gotta go. 
Some of us got to go so we can live to be old because nigga, prison have become the best preservation for a hard head ass nigga that won't listen to his mama, his teacher, nobody. He don't pray and he mean, he heartless and he hurt people because he hurt. Prison have been the best preservation because when he get down there, many of them conform. Mm -hmm. Most nigga go to prison and don't be bad boys no more. That's why when you go to your first parole hearing, you ain't got no write ups nigga. You've been fucking up all your life, and you want us to believe you've been in prison two years and you ain't done nothing? Denied. Now you're a good boy. You done come to prison, now you want to try to do right. But you ain't been doing right all your life. Look at the irony of that. You want to try to learn the rule, but you've been breaking rules all your life. Now you listening to somebody. You listening to a nigga you don't even know. You just listening to him because he black. And you half ass scared, nigga. Now you listen to somebody. And you don't know if he telling you right from wrong, but you wouldn't listen to your mama and your grandmama now. But now you in this cell with this nigga listening to him and he telling you about his God, his Waleka Masalam. And mama them been trying to tell you about their. They been feeding people. He asking you for shit. He got you putting in on the spread. He ain't feeding you. But you listening to him. Now he your uncle, he, now he the big homie. Nah, my nigga. But this is what I want to tell our young boy. Everybody can't be Malcolm. Everybody can't be Martin. Everybody can't be uh, Marcus Garvey. Uh, everybody can't be King Ron. Everybody can't be Tupac. Nigga, God needs some Daniels. Daniel had to go in the lines then. God needs some niggas that they got to be in prison so they can help all the young niggas return back home right. Mm. Now them niggas ain't gonna never come home. Mm. But they good men with them life sentences. And they find young niggas and criminal homie, let me show you something, let me teach you something. You smart, my nigga, go this way. Turn right and go straight, nigga. But it ain't till the young hard head niggas go down there and meet them niggas. Then they start saying, oh man, I don't want to do this. Before then, they don't know this exists. That's why I say send their ass to prison. That's, that's, that's a good point. Uh, those young men do need those older men to tell them, like, no, nah, y'all don't want to, y'all don't want to be locked up in hell. I grew up down here like you, nigga. I've been down here since I was 17 years old. Right. Nigga, I'm 49, nigga. Right. And they be honorable men. But, but you know what ends up happening, young fellas? It, it's called, nigga, getting stuck in character or getting stuck on stage. King Vaughn got stuck in character. Nipsey Hussle got stuck on stage. Now break that down, the difference. Nipsey was trying to evolve off the stage, but he was still representing role in the 60s. And it was in contrast to uplifting the community. It was in contrast to that Monday he was going to go meet with the L.A. County Sheriff to do this new gang program. It was in contrast to the Vectors program to what he was doing because in front of the store, he's confronting the guy in the streets about snitching. He's stuck on stage. Come on, my nigga, get off stage. Okay. You stuck on stage, my nigga. And he a killer. He a killer. So you enforcing... So... Uh, just being in front of the store or uh, stuck on stage or uh, stuck in character. Nigga die playing gangster. Or uh, stuck in character. Nigga got 75 years and 20 some years old. He ain't coming up to parole till he about 40 years old. Nigga, he got to play gangster for a little while. He don't went in too young. He got to go make a name for himself. He got to show, he, he going to be stuck in character for a while. What if he got to kill a nigga while he in character? What if in character, homie, he becomes so heartless and ruthless, he can't get out of character because he done hurt so many people or he done got hurt? Or what if you just do something so wrong, my nigga, you don't come home? You don't know if you stuck in character or stuck on stage. But at some point, at some point in your life, my nigga, I promise you, if you a good nigga, 
you're going to feel bad about doing wrong. And in your heart and in your spirit, you're going to be remorseful. And you're going to mean it. And you're sincere about changing. You're sincere about your belief in God. But guess what? Them gates still ain't going to open for you. Can you imagine the agony? God, I'm sorry. I ain't going to never do this again. I mean in my heart. God, if y'all, I ain't gonna, but you can't go home because of what you've done. Well, my God is a forgiving God. You know but you still can't go home because the judge sentenced you to life. God done forgave you. That's why your heart is pure. But you still can't go home. Imagine that day for day agony because you've repented. You've purged. You're not the same person and you'll never hurt nobody else again. But you're still condemned to that punishment. That's what makes niggas go from being Christian, evolve into Muslim, evolve and nigga have to keep evolving, homie. Because time don't change down there. Just to face it. Mm-hmm. So a nigga can't stay the same in prison with a life sentence. He got to go to being doing all kinds of shit. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I mean by stuck on stage. Uh, nigga have to find a way to exit stage. If you got a problem with a nigga, homie, and you might got to kill him, and he might got to kill you, one of y'all bow gracefully and exit stage. One of y'all, nigga, one of y'all bow gracefully. And both of y'all exit stage, or one of y'all, So you think you think these guys will receive a life sentence? Uh, for in the, the feds, uh, 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 in, in the feds, yeah. Uh, how many? The feds got a ninety-eight percent conviction rate. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't lose. Mm-hmm. They don't lose. Mm-hmm. Uh, the things that they did to put the case together and to solve the case. Uh, let me know, homie. There's nothing that we can do. And get away with it. Oh, uh, yeah, they know everything. Oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, the the callousness of it, uh, that's gonna be hard to beat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, God forgive murderers. God forgive rapists. Uh, Paul was a murderer. Uh, he wrote a third of the New Testament. Uh, it, it's been my clear understanding, homie, that, that that God loves playing in the dirt. Now, all five might not change. Uh, I'm willing to bet my life three do. I, I'm willing to bet my life that 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 that. Duck will be the reason that three of those guys change their life and give their life to God and become a better impact for young black males that's coming down there so they can return home to us better. They're going to be those Daniels. Uh, I don't think it's a five lost cause, whether they get life or not. Uh, I see three lives changing. And, 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 and if God can spare one life to save the world, why wouldn't he spare one of us to save two kids, three kids? Mm-hmm. Because it says Jesus will leave the whole flock just to go save one sheep. Uh, so uh, maybe the way Doug died, because he knew God from his mother and his grandmother's name, so he had a concept of who God was, an image of who God was. He knew that the spirit of God exists. Uh, maybe the struggle and the fight we seen uh, him trying to get up uh, was 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 him giving his life to God because he had time. Uh, the body does strange things when, when it's shot. We don't know what the mind and the soul does. Uh, but if you talk to people, uh, their life flash before their eyes. So it, I, I hope I'm I'm given the opportunity for my life to flash before my eyes, uh, so I can reflect. And make something right in my heart and in my mind and in my spirit before I close my eyes. I think that's what the reflection is for. 
Uh, I don't know that, but that's what I would tell myself. Right. So uh, I think it's some, I think it's some good that can come out of this, homie. Okay. Uh, because I, I I serve time for taking somebody's life, mm -hmm. and look what the good that came out of that, homie. I grew up to become a youth advocate to work with other children who took people's life, mm -hmm. and to talk about kids and gun violence and people taking people. That's my whole plight. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I was responsible for being a part of taking somebody's life. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm betting on three out of five. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's always some good that can come out of a bad situation. All sure. things work for the good of those who love God and is called according to his will and his purpose. I heard my mama say that so much. You see, it's like a song in my head because I used to do that when she'd be saying that, like, yeah, yeah, mama, God, but niggas started making sense. Because she would say, there's no except, there's no buts. And look, son, it's right here, there's no except. All thing, mama, all thing. And nigga, she made it make sense. Uh, so maybe I've been tricked. Yeah, maybe I've been tricked into believing that shit. Uh, but nigga, throughout my life, uh, all things have been working for my good, mm -hmm. trouble and all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that. Yeah. Likewise, and I think everybody can attest to that. Now, alongside the... Uh, you know the trial. Um, you know you uh, you you recently met with um, Lil Tim. Yeah. You know Lil Tim was the guy that was uh, accused of killing Kane Vaughn, and then I guess later with some charges dropped. Um, I really don't know the specifics. Me of, neither. I hear people say the police did it. Right. Uh, I haven't heard Atlanta police admit to doing it. Right. Uh. Uh. It, it, it would be hard to push that trial forward with the documentation of what the FBI put out about King Ron. So it, it would be hard to push that push right. that forward. Uh, well, you would be narrating a documentary on um, Lutzen? Yeah, uh, I, I was asked to, mm -hmm. uh, but I gave a narration of something. Uh, I painted the picture spiritually uh, in modern day time, that King Von was Goliath and little Tim was David. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and David slayed the giant Goliath. And, 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 and what made me come up with that, that scenario is I hear people say, well, he's a nerd. Little Tim's a nerd. He ain't never. Right. That's how God works. That's David versus Goliath. David was the little nerd. Goliath was the big giant. Yeah. David uh, took his slingshot. King Ron was a giant, homie. He was. The essence of who he was and what people thought he was made him bigger than life. That's why he became an instant phenomenon because people believed he did what we believed he did. He did what he rapped about in a personification of this handsome, a uh, cool, charismatic, baby face, smiling, demon killer uh, was so fascinating mm -hmm. to the youth. Mm -hmm. uh, but that spirit of murder that he can so eloquently uh, describe and rap about in his storytelling mm -hmm. uh, was chilling to me. Uh, he made real murders if they were. Uh, sound like pretty stories in his rhymes. That you can dance to somebody's death. Uh, I saw a 60 minute interview, and I don't know how true it is, uh, but he was being interviewed by a white person mm -hmm. about uh, some little girl that he may have been accused of killing. K.I. I, I think so. Uh, You're talking about the A&E document. Yeah, I seen that. Okay. Uh, they say he has some, but the uh the uh the cunningness of his smile uh had he done it right. if he was a part of it right. uh cold blooded i almost said he, he, he i was about to say it's like he had an empty soul but he smiled uh he seemed happy when he was with his little girlfriend uh he loved his friends so that can't be an empty soul. Right, right. Uh, so the more I grow, 
the more I criticize, uh, the more I assess, uh, he was a product of his environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just like every other killer. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, Tookie Williams, uh, the products uh, of the environment, uh, they mirror trauma. Uh, they mirror childhood trauma from childhood all the way throughout adult. And, 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 and the only way they learn how to, to, to mask or, or, or deal with trauma is to hurt other people. Because hurt people hurt people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you hurt, it feels good to hurt people. Yeah. 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 You want to dish out the energy you've been receiving. Feels good. Yeah. Feels good. Yeah. Yeah. So how did it feel when you met Lil Tim? Uh, it was surreal because he's a quiet kid uh, and he seemed shy. Mm -hmm. uh, he too got a baby face. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't see a kid that's proud of what he did. I see a kid that has some empathy for what he did and he really don't want to talk about it. Uh, what was camera looking at me? Uh, I think if he could have done something different and he could go back and do it, I think he would. Mm -hmm. I think all of them would. Mm -hmm. Uh, I met the whole town. I met the mayor. I met the, uh, 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 Alderman Leggett, District 2, uh, Sheriff. A uh, state senator, uh, a, a whole whole event full of old black people, white people, Hispanic. So I met the whole town before I actually met Lil Tim. But but what I did, I, I I I sat back and watched him, observed him from afar. Uh, he's just a kid. Uh, Y'all forgive him. Y'all forgive him. Oh, uh, y'all got to, homie. We got to. Uh, it'll it'll heal us all. It, it'll be one of the best starting points, homie, for black people to heal in America. If we can start with Lil Tim and I start with King Von. Uh, I saw something, homie. Uh, it it it, it softened my heart. I shook the hand, but homie, he ain't proud of that shit. The 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 mother's not proud of that, but uh. When, when, when you coming from a small country town and, and Savannah is a small country town like Fort Worth, Texas, uh, those big cities are, are huge. California nigga come down here, he can fuck everybody, mama, sister. That's how it used to be. Nigga ride through the city with California plate, anywhere he go, he get pussy. Nigga roll out the red carpet just because he from California. He could be a sucker, a marker. That's how they got the play on him. So we were fascinated by the big city. Uh, Vaughn was a giant, homie. Vaughn was a giant in, 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 in every essence of the hip hop culture. Nigga, that was like Tupac. Uh, nah, homie. Uh, that wasn't done out of hate and, and, and spite. That was done out of fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was done out of fear. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when you're angry, you can't think logical. When you're afraid, you can't think logical. When you when you're hungry and the hunger pains just start to hurt and you start to feel like you're starving, you can't think logical if you don't know what you go eat. So if 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 if, if King Von fans is asking me, well, man, look where he come from. Look, I'm saying, okay, I'm willing to do that. If y'all willing to do it for Lil Tim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like how you you basically just like to keep it at an even playing field. I right now, uh, normally I would take sides. Yeah. Yeah, normally, uh, no, normally I would take sides, homie. But uh, I've been on a journey, so I ain't just met Lil Tim. I done met FBG Doug. I done talked to Tuka Mother. Mm -hmm. uh, so I done met all these different elements. Mm -hmm. And just think, four years ago, I ain't know nothing about Chicago. Wow. I ain't know who Tuka was. I ain't know nothing about Vaughn or none of that. So uh, 
their deaths and, and, and their deaths is what made me look at all the other previous deaths. So that's what caught my attention. I'm, kid killing kid. What? That nigga killed how many people? Man, yeah. So that's what caught my attention. Because right. I grew up with kids who kill kids. Right. Kids who kill. So that's what caught my attention. So once you start looking at it, you start saying, nigga, this is a force to be reckoned with. And it sits high and it shoots low. Mm -hmm. Chicago up there, homie. So every that shit is a, it's, it's like an umbrella now. Uh, and how long do we sit back as grown folks and we let our babies kill each other before we get out there and stand in front of them and make one of them kill us yeah. to save one of their life? Because I done seen daddies do that. His son into it with another son. He a blood, he a crip, say, man, your son, and they at the park. I done seen fathers do that so their sons can have peace. So when do we as adults, nigga, we gonna have to fight with these little niggas. We might have to shoot it out with them too, homie. But somebody have to go out there, homie, and stand in the way of all these bullets that's hitting the kids. That nigga Boo got it because no baby mama. God rest her beautiful soul. That nigga video shoot got shot up. The instincts of the mother made her jump up and say, where my babies at? Boom, 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 boom. She mm. got hit and got killed home in front of her kids. Mm. Oh. Because rappers beefing. Mm -hmm. So it's been a it's it, it, it's it, it, it's been a, a it's been a lot of tragedy, homie. Mm -hmm. Uh mm -hmm. it's been a lot of lot of lot of tragedy, homie. Over nothing wars. While while the whole time wars are being waged on us and we're waging war on each other in hood wars, drug wars, rap war. But there's a war on drugs that's on us that affects us. There's a war on poverty on us. There's a war on terror that affects us. There's a war on crime. So, nigga, there's a war on poverty. Nigga, so all, it's a war on all this, and, and we're the spars of it. Mm -hmm. So we hadn't snapped, my nigga. That's a war on a black man. All, all of those wars. Look, I don't want to sound racist, but the black Americans in America were the spoils of American wars. So the, the, the drug war wasn't for black people. It was for the mafia. We got the worst end of it. The war on drug became more effective. Uh, uh, right. The war on crime, three strike minimum guidelines, right. since that was more on us. The war on poverty. Nigga, most of our communities are food deserts. Most motherfuckers got to eat out of a convenience store rather than shop out of a grocery store. That's a war on poverty. And then you're being kicked out of the, the inner cities where you're being pushed out more in the rural areas where you have less access to more services. That's a war on us, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, we can't see it because everybody else who come over here, uh, they set up around us and they do fairly well. And we get to spend a lot of our money because we consume. That's part of the war. We fund these wars, whether we selling drugs, smoking drugs, buying drugs. I think when it comes to, um, you know, speaking with intellect, you, 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 you definitely one of the more prominent figures, you know, on the Internet. And um, we, but I don't want to be, though, homie. I want to be a bullshit nigga. I, I want to have you, my you got, you got, you got, You got like a double-sided well, personality. Why, that, that, that's why I do it. Yeah. Because, because I, I don't... I, they didn't make Dr. King normal for us, homie. For us to really understand him and, and, and admire him in the aspect of who he was as a man. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do wrong. I'm going to make mistakes. Right. But I ain't doing wrong to people. Oh. Uh, we have to allow our leaders to make mistakes. Yeah. That's why I don't want to be a leader. That's why sometimes homie, I do some of the most craziest shit because I don't want to be praised. I got flaws because I don't want to be put on a pedestal. Don't make me the God. I'm a bullshit nigga. And nigga, out of 365 days, 
I don't want to be righteous all 365 days. I want some bullshit days in between. Yeah. Yeah, nigga, I want I want to play trick maybe 10 days after after a year where I'm somewhere playing trick. Yeah. Yeah, nigga, I want yeah, nigga, I want to be a low down dirty motherfucker where I run away from home maybe two days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we can't confess that as a man. Yeah. Nigga, I want to tell my woman, shut up. No, I don't like that shit. I want to ignore the kids sometimes. I want to go outside, nigga, and bullshit with the fellas and not do nothing sometimes and not go in the house and do shit and don't answer the phone. That's, I want I want to do that. And that's okay. But the world say we can't do that. I got to be righteous. I got to be the righteously. Well, you the community activist. You ain't got no business in the strip club. Says who? Nigga, I like pussy. Yeah, I like pussy. Oh, uh, you, you, well, you married. So you watch porn. When your woman leave, you watch porn. I don't watch porn. I go watch them hoes in real life. <laughs> well, I at least got action at touching it. And yeah, nigga, you touching you. If nothing else, I can get a lap dance and calm in my britches. <laughs> nigga, you touching you. So, uh, different strokes for different folks. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, now, nah, homie, so I want to be a man. I want to be a regular man with flaws. Uh, yeah, 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 now, nah, man, so I, I don't want to be perfect. So that's why I switch up and, and, and do this, uh, because I'm not the same all the time. I'm not the same every day. Some days, nigga, I don't feel like praying. Some days, I don't pray on my food. Fuck praying, now for the eat. Right. Don't even think to pray. Some days, I think to pray. Yeah, so, uh. So how, how do you deal with being misunderstood? I don't know I'm misunderstood. I think the world is misunderstood. I think, I think the world got the problem. Most crazy people don't know they crazy. They think the world crazy. That's me. I don't know I'm misunderstood, Nick. Because I'm playing. I don't think because I'm playing. Uh, I'm intentionally trying to be misunderstood. Yeah, some of my, my little mom and them say I'm a narcissistic, egotistical mom. <laughs> I thought narcissism was a good trait. When I read the definition, narcissism seemed like a good trait. All leaders and champions and, 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 and superstars have a, a bit of narcissism to them. Okay. That's a great trait to have when you're great. And what's a narcissist again? Uh, a nigga that think highly of themselves. Okay. And, and very see, hardly see. Most people say they can't see no wrong and they wrong, but see wrong in everybody else's. That's the average person. That's the average person. You and your woman are against she ain't gonna never see herself as being wrong. You gonna hardly ever see yourself as being wrong unless you get caught cheating. Yeah, baby, you caught me. But long as you, she ain't gonna never say, baby, I'm wrong for just fucking with you. What? Baby, I'm wrong for having an attitude for nothing because I had a dream you were messing with somebody and it was just a dream, but the dream's still real. Baby, I had a dream you was messing with somebody. Well, why can't you have a dream we want some money? Why all your intuition got to be bad? Right. So that's everybody's concept because man justifies their own wrong. That's why they can do wrong. They're justified to themselves. And, and, and most people can't look at themselves and say, I'm wrong, especially if it hurt. Yeah. In one of our most recent interviews on DJU TV, we interviewed Dr. Umar Johnson. And um, the fans, they, they're they interested in a, um, like, a, like a podcast featuring both yourself and Dr. Umar Johnson. I heard y'all talk about it on the Danzy Project. Yeah, so they, I, they tried to make it happen. Right, so I asked Dr. Umar about it, you know, and he told us why he, you know, respectively declined. I didn't see it. Yeah, well he told us, you know, he felt like, um, you know, you, you've made some disrespectful comments toward himself before. So, you know, he I'm not going to take what I bring to the table and sensationalize it and trivialize it by bringing this person on set who's liable to say anything. You understand? I'm not going to sit there and you come crooked out your mouth, which he's known to do. That's just going to cause conflict off of what? So you can get views and likes and clicks and snaps. I'm not into that shit. You see what I'm saying? Right. Not to mention. He's made several, several repeated disrespectful comments about me. Okay. So you want me to sit down 
with somebody who don't know me and has disrespected me plenty of time. Who the fuck you think I am? <laughs> yeah, I ain't did nothing to say the nigga was big in front of school. See, it's a difference, homie. Uh, when your leader stand before you and say, man, I'm trying to help y'all. I want to help y'all. I'm going to help y'all. And this is what I'm going to do. And they don't never ask y'all for nothing and go to work. That was me, homie. I've never came to my people and said, hey, y'all, I need donations for backpacks. What I would do is I would tell a lie and make a lie come true. Say, y'all, I'm having backpack supply giveaway down at the classic lady at such and such time. Now, I might got $300. That might at least give me $25.50 backpacks. Mm -hmm. My nigga Trey Porter go bring 100 more. Mm -hmm. The mother nigga go bring some. Mm -hmm. The nigga from the south side, mm -hmm. fast nigga go and bring me five. Not because you asked, but you didn't already. I did it. Right. I, this is what I'm saying. You made, I'm doing. You, you made the initiative. This, this the initiative. is what I'm saying. I'm doing. I'm not asking y'all. I'm having this on this day, and now they coming. Now they coming. I learned that from a, I, 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 from a, a Baltimore attorney, a little small Jewish lady who, who trained me in, in youth advocacy in Washington, D.C. Uh, with the campaign fair sentence in the youth camp. Uh, and I can. Uh, she said, Charleston, you have to figure out a way to, to make your organization self-sustainable. Nobody is going to give you money or give you donations and grants for your vision to help other people. If they do, they own you, right? You're taking handouts. You're becoming dependent, whether that's a grant. So you have to be self-sustainable. What do you do? You sell ski masks, you sell clothes. So when I look at Dr. Umar Johnson, he talk good, but where is he working with kids at? I got evidence of me, a plethora of evidence. So me, where is his evidence at other than just talking? So I, I wouldn't say it's disrespectful. Uh, I say it's the truth. Uh, you can't ask black people for money. The preacher get us with the building fund. God say if you give a prophet a cup of water, man, fuck all that. So I'm saying, my nigga, when people say, hey, Charleston, what we need this, can I work here? We send you some money. I say to the people in your no town with an organization, don't send me no money. If you go send me some, send me some blankets, some T-shirts, some socks. Some panties, some bras. I'm going to go pass it out in the hood directly to the people. Don't send nothing to me. You can send it through me. So when Cam Newton asked me, hey, man, what, 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 you, what you want? What, how can I help you? Nah, homie, I'm in Atlanta. Help that brother, homie. Can you send him $1,000? I could easily say, mama, can you send me that thousand? Send it that way. So I'm saying as a leader, you don't ask your people for their money. Most of them poor anyway. Fines, the old nigga told me, have some or try to figure out something to sell to your people. Everybody else do. Everybody else know what your people like. Why you can't figure out what to sell to your people? We, uh, barbecue, clothes, uh, conversation, videos, dick, uh, pussy, what sells something to your people. Everybody else got something open up in y'all community to sell these people. Why don't you? So a light came on. Why would I beg my people for their money, my nigga? I hate for the preacher to do it. So I wasn't saying that to be disrespectful. Uh, you know, so yeah. that I, 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 the nigga who beg ain't strong to me. The nigga out in the community begging for help, they ain't strong to me. So I was resentful because I wouldn't beg. I was resentful to the community because I wouldn't be. And I feel like more should, should, should have joined in. So I started becoming resentful and angry toward the community. And it started reflecting in, 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 in the way I would dress the community. Eventually, I would have to go because I would feel anger and resentment coming in my heart for the community. I would have to get in the shower and ask God secretly because I didn't want to say it out loud. Oh, uh, man, God, please don't let no heart, no hate get in my heart for my own people. Nigga, that was, that was my secret prayer for a, a, at least a year. So that's how. So once I, I got the anger and the resentment out of my heart, I'm like, OK, now what, God? That's where the characters came from. Now I can come play.
you, bitch ass nigga. I hate you, whole ass nigga. Bitch ass. Now I can play it. But before then, I would have really been meaning it. It's a difference now. So when you hear me say, nigga, I went and worked on me before I came to, the, I got that hate and anger and resentment out of my heart. Huh? So I can stand before my people and don't hate them and don't be angry at them. I hate the conditions. I hate, I'm angry at the culture, not the people. Yeah. So that's why I can say, King Vaughn. And man, somebody tell me what's his real name, homie, so we can find out what kind of kid he was. The culture is King Vaughn. My people is the Bennett boy. I'm learning too, nigga. The culture ain't our people. So we can hate the culture, my nigga. Because white folk had a culture that hated us and hung us and enslaved us. They changed. Because they had other white people that didn't like this culture. This ain't right. Hell no. And it changed. It took a while. So, nigga, that's the path I'm on. Yeah. I'm attacking the culture, not the people. It just looked like the people because the people are so submerged into the culture. So the people feel attacked because we think this is our culture and it's not. It's not. What do you think are some positive uh, strategies we could use to shift the culture? Uh, teach content creation in schools. Fuck all that standardized testing bullshit. Uh, teach content creation in schools. Uh, uh, have classes of psychodrama uh, where, where, where children are, are, are doing theater arts and, and, and drama classes, uh, but they're acting out the, the, the traumas and the things that they see in their community where there's a friend being killed, they witness somebody, they need to go and reenact those things. Stop, okay, how you feel right here? They need to break it down with a count. We, we, we have to attack it. We have to attack the mental and the psychological aspects of what trauma has done to us. Mm -hmm. Not, the, 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 if we do the psychological and, and the mental, uh, we, can, we can mend the emotional. Yeah. I agree with that. Because the thoughts shape the heart. Yeah. And, and, and the mouth speaks the thoughts of the heart. Yeah. What you think is how you feel, right? Or how you feel is what you think. Either or, but that's how you act. Yeah. You act upon what you're thinking about. Yeah. And, and typically, this fuel about what you feel. Mm. So you have to train children to separate thoughts and feelings. So when we used to be in group sessions in, in, in juvenile, and they would say, Charleston, well, well, how, well, how do you feel about when your dad left? Well, man, I, I just thought it was messed up. They would, they would say, well, that's not a feeling. Well, man, I don't know. So what they would do is they'd give you a sheet of paper with a hundred different faces on it and say, look at one of them faces and see how you feel. So then that would be part of a daily exercise where you look in the morning, how you feel today. Morning. So that's how you learn how you feel by looking at these faces and you can identify right, the feeling. Right, right, so right. now... As you learn to identify feelings, you can separate thought from feeling. Okay, well, I think this, but I feel this. Well, okay. You're wrong for feeling this, but you're right to what you feel. But let me show you where you're wrong because you thought that, but you were wrong. So you show the difference. Yeah. We're not being taught. And then we're not being trained. So, nigga, we was taught. Uh, in anger management, count backwards from 10 to 9. Breathe, take deep breath. So we learn some training exercises. We learn how some coping skills. Training. Training, homie. So, uh, so one of the positive things that, that, that we're trying to do now, homie, is, is I've gotten with a program, uh, some, some guys out of New York uh, that, that created a, a program. They got government and grant funding. They got I mean, they got a lot of big name people involved in it, a lot of sponsorships. And so they're going to use paintball, uh, paintball games and shootings uh, for therapy. And, and there's no evidence on it yet, but they've done somewhat of a qualitative study to see that paintball and therapy is good for inner city black kids that's been traumatized uh, due to gun violence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's, that's the next thing. So from, from, just from a little bit of what I know, Chicago, L.A., Baltimore, New York, uh, I think Atlanta. Uh, uh, I heard Lil Dirk name be mentioned, Young Thug, Drewski, 
uh, King Von. So everybody having a paintball team. O Block having a paintball team. Uh, these guys are real paintball guys because paintball is an Olympic sport. So uh, it, it's, this is innovative. Uh, I, I think this is going to put black black children uh, in their trauma as well as America on a national stage with 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 the Olympic Games with with paintball. And and and, and I told the, the the founder, I said. Because what you created and, and what I think is going to do before the world is going to get black people a seat at the United Nations mm. because of our pain and trauma. Uh, and, and we can thank Chicago for this mm. in a good way. Mm. What, made you, what, you, what made you say we can thank Chicago for this? Uh, because uh, uh, unbeknownst to me, and, and ironically, I found out that uh, when Chief Keith left Chicago, uh, he went to L.A. Mm -hmm. and him and a lot of his friends from Chicago, part of them dealing with their trauma and, 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 and their healing and, and him changing how he think and, and act was him spending a lot of time and his guys doing paintball okay. and it became therapeutic. Okay. So you see his behavior change. Right. So how do you go from this little nigga out of Chicago involving all this shooting at the police to a well-behaved superstar now? Mm -hmm. Paintball, my nigga. Mm -hmm. And therapy, getting the healing. Because most children today uh, are, are suffering from, from what they call a dual diagnosis, uh, substance abuse problems and mental health. So you got a 10-year-old nigga popping pills. He already, he already dope head. He already dope fiend. And he drinking. And he smoking weed. And he fucking. He got to do everything at 10 years old. So that's on top of the mental health issues. The trauma from whatever pain, whatever murk abuse that don't even include the getting high part so when they killing homie they ain't just killing with an undeveloped brain they brain is clouded mm -hmm. altered altered distorted yep. at every aspect of their existence mm -hmm. so uh I, I, I'm learning more as, as I as I as I'm studying this shit, homie, looking yeah. at it, yeah. Uh, I didn't come to get stuck on the internet. I had to figure out a way mm -hmm. to not get stuck on the internet, mm -hmm. and that's how it evolved to comedy. Mm -hmm. But the internet taught me what I was good at on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, so I gave the internet, and I continue to give the internet what they want. They don't want me. Uh, uh, not every day. They want me right here because they sick of the bullshit, Charles. Uh, yeah, they want me right here, but on a day-to-day -day basis, they want that bullshit, Charles. Yeah, they want to live. You got there right there, want it. Yeah. Uh, so supply and demand at yeah. this point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when they get tired of him, nigga, I'm gonna evolve into the movies and start mm -hmm. acting. I'm gonna be the new Denzel. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh. Because I was walking in purpose and I was facilitating what I believe was a God-given vision by walking in purpose uh, because I felt like I was failing as I was walking in purpose, uh, my failure turned into frustrations. My frustrations turned into anger and resentments and my anger and resentments, because I didn't want to hold on to it, helped me to discover my gifts that I'm now showing to the world that's making room for itself. Mm -hmm. But look what I had to go through to get them gifts, nigga, and tap into them. Mm -hmm. I had got in purpose where every nigga need to be, but I ain't had the gifts because the heart wasn't right. I still had, I was coming out of the streets. I was making right choices and I was making right decisions, uh, but the heart was still being conditioned and cleansed. And it still had a little residue. I remember telling the old nigga Pops one time, I said, Pop, man, if I get a bunch of money, man, I don't know what I do. I might stop working in the community. I might go back to doing this. Right. Uh, I knew what was in my heart at the time. Yeah, so uh, I went a little further. Uh, and I'm here. Yeah. I want to ask you a question before I forget, because... Um, 
you know, we see you do a lot of interviews on a lot of different platforms. You put great numbers up everywhere you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can yeah. you tell us if there's a reason why you haven't did an interview with No Jumper? Uh, the, the reason I ain't done No Jumper, homie, is uh, I don't like him. You know, homie, I, 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 homie, I don't see him good for black people. I, I see him as a white boy. So when I did the Cam Newton podcast, I strategically, I strategically call him a master. I see him as a slave master over a bunch of niggas who don't treat them niggas as equals. He don't treat them niggas as equals, homie. Oh, uh, no, nah, homie, I ain't man, man. That white boy let a nigga fuck his wife, and he sat there and looked at it. And now he got some more niggas bidding to fuck his wife. Uh, he's been accused of messing with underage girls. But he doesn't try to make it seem like I'm a rapist. And I've never been accused of anything. I just say some wild, crazy shit like I done done it. But by this point, there should be a lot of victims if I done raped somebody. Mm -hmm. I got enough money to be sued. They suing Bill Cobb and them. So how is it I can be on here for all these years and nobody has no woman, no allegation, but all these other celebrities do, including Adam. He's made disparaging remarks about messing with underage girls. So I don't see nobody, I don't see no black person who lead a hood, go on Adam 22 platform and become a world star. Like, I don't know. I strategically avoided his platform because his platform is very, very low vibrational. Pussy, dick, ass, gang, bang, in prison. Pussy, dick, ass, gang, bang, in prison. That's very low vibrational. Yeah. Very low vibrational, homie. And he sits back as the puppet master asking about nigga gang shit and be excited about it. And then he talk as if he can sick them niggas on somebody. And them niggas to kick somebody ass for that white boy. And they getting crumbs. They are getting crumbs. When I saw little homie FB, FBJ, man, whatever his name, car get broken too, that's why, my nigga. That white boy ain't gonna make sure we safe up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That white boy ain't gonna make sure we safe up there, homie. And... Nobody kill a nigga more than them California niggas. That's true. Nobody would kill a black person faster than a California nigga will, homie. So to have this white man have me come to his trap, he couldn't pay me $500,000 to do it, homie. I don't like him. I don't like white people like him. I hate white people like him. Now we'll the shit out of his bitch, but not just one, all of us, because we know that's what she really wants. She don't want no one nigga. Dick. White hoes ain't never been satisfied with one nigga and that nigga good. She want more. That's why he got bidding for his bitch to fuck his bitch. He like to see them niggas run dick in his girl. They gonna be fucking him next. He went in that room with that transsexual, didn't he? Didn't he? Homie, that white boy sick. He a fucker dog. <laughs> yeah, he a fucker dog. And she a little dog. She'll put peanut butter on her pussy and let her dog lick it like that white girl did on the Orange is the New Black on the second season. I seen it. They let the dog go into the prison. That bitch in that mother prison cell putting that peanut butter, patting it on that mother that and dry dog tongue licking that got out of common. <laughs> White folk been doing that shit forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you're right. So now I hate, now I wouldn't die. <laughs> so I would never do no jumper and I would never do Vlad again. And I would never go on the breakfast club. You, right, you ain't never been on the breakfast club. Nah, nah, them niggas intentionally ignore me. Okay. Yeah, them niggas, cause, cause them niggas, cause them niggas been accused of some shit, sexual shit. Mm. See, all the niggas that's been accused of sexual shit despise me. Because they really been accused of it. I was just taking up for Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby, my nigga. Boy, a nigga that done one white hole like Bill Cosby done it. And Bill Cosby went to prison and said, fuck y'all, I ain't admitting to nothing. I wouldn't give a damn about getting out of here. 
Bill could have been and got out. He wouldn't admit. And he was having fun in prison. He had never been. Nigga, Bill came out, nigga, and ain't apologized to the world. That's my kind of nigga. And he done white girl bad, but they liked it. He just done them bad. That's how you do white girl. Make them like it and do them bad. Get on, bitch. You ain't supposed to be over here nowhere. Your dad and them catch you across the railroad track. You better get on back over there. And she'll come back again. Because she liked that feeling that that nigga dick put inside of her. It's taboo. She ain't supposed to be getting it. Ain't nothing like sneaking and freaking. Nigga done snuck across them white folks' neighborhood and they'll kill you. They catch you over here. Nigga risk his life going to go get Miss Lily Pussy. And she'll risk her life and her fortune trying to come get that nigga's torpedo. It's a natural love they got for each other. But I'm not for the let no white man sit back while I f his wife and he watch me. <laughs> Yeah, what's that's what's that shit called? Cucking? Cuck? Cuck out? Yeah, yeah, that's white boy shit. Yeah. Cause a nigga kill you putting that dick off in his woman. For sure. Boy, she over there moaning and patting on your thigh the way Leno was patting on Jason Love thigh. Man, a nigga kill the whole household. White boy take it. Mm -hmm. For you know it, he gonna be wanting to join in, like Caitlyn Jenner. Baby, I want some too. Let me see what it feel like. Cause he watching her enjoy it. And he's sitting there trying to figure out, how can I take that big old He's sitting there. Why else would he be sitting there looking? Getting out to his woman, getting that rotor rooter. And she's squirming. She was enjoying that <laughs> She is. So let's, 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 let's talk about the last time we met, right? Yeah. Uh, it obviously went viral all, all across the world. Um, Charleston White pulls a gun out on DJU. Yeah. Um, what was the backlash like on your end? Uh, I was a horrible mother uh, Nobody should ever interview me again. Uh, you should sue me. Yeah, yeah, I got a lot of backlash. Uh, and I didn't want to come out and tell them uh, what I wanted to tell them. Mm -hmm. uh, but it looked like I pulled a gun out on you. Right. Because I went over here to do this, to come to the camera. Now, when you jump up, right. I can't say, move, move, get out the way. Right, right. I can't say move, but I'm trying to put my back to you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I got there. Mm -hmm. But I can't tell you, you know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. Uh, you was doing that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to send signs. Uh, right, right, right. Uh, nigga, I'm, get out the way, nigga. But right. I, I can't say, DJ, you ain't get out the way, my nigga. Right, Let me talk right. to the camera. So, <laughs> nigga, it's just like, it's just like we, when we did the uh, the murder change me uh, uh, town hall meeting uh, with the mothers, homie, all them niggas who had killed people were, were, was was they major niggas in this city, major niggas out of New Orleans, uh, major niggas out of Houston. Uh, I just told them we was having a, a panel discussion, but I didn't tell them what the details was. So, homie, I don't put this event together. I just have an idea of what I want to do. I don't know how I need to put it together. So when them niggas get there, them niggas said, say, man, shit, nigga, what's the play? I looked at all them niggas and said, nigga, get open. And them niggas said, say no more. So what that mean? Mm -hmm. Damn, said, huh, let's go, everybody right. get out. Right. Right. We got to run, sir. Right. So that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I ain't, I'm running the play, but nigga, we just getting open. Oh, sure. uh, and it go how it go. Oh, yeah. uh, nigga, we'll tell the play after it happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, 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 so that's what it was. So, uh, nigga, uh, let the cameras roll. Yeah. But if you watch my body language, I'm mm -hmm. trying to tell the nigga, man, goddamn, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get to this camera right here. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's standing like, man, Mr. Charles, man, nigga, get you don't fuck with me with no hand, my gun, goddamn. But I, and now my nigga Wayne jumping up. I'm saying, man, I, yeah, so, oh, uh, no, nah, nigga, let's go all the way through. Yeah, it got, uh, it got pretty intense real fast, you know? Oh, uh, well, uh, because once we all hold up, it look real. Mm-hmm. It look real in the motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Cause nigga, I done went in the character. Mm -hmm. See how a nigga get stuck in character? Mm -hmm. But if I didn't say, man, tell you little homeboy, no, nah, nigga, this game related shit. But nigga, we done, we, you can get stuck in character. But what'll make you get stuck in character? Ego. 
No, nah, homie, say, listen, your family go see this shit. When you get home tomorrow, nigga, let them know it's Thanksgiving. You wasn't in no danger. Now, nah, let them know you were good, homie. But, nigga, I just want to see how you go spend this shit. Just go let me know if you a game-related nigga. When you drop that mother. I call you, ooh, nigga, you a game-related nigga. <laughs> boy, you gonna do good, nigga. Ooh, I love you. <laughs> I knew then. Mm -hmm. uh, ego would have twisted it and made it more than what it was. Right, right. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I wanted, man, the Cam Newton interview was good, but that interview was my most profound interview. Mm -hmm. It got missed. Mm -hmm. It was too profound. Yeah. I, it was too profound too early. Yeah. If you bring that same video back now mm -hmm. and double dip that after this cam, mm -hmm. that two million go go watch that one too because it was just as profound. It, was. it just got lost it was. in the bullshit. It was. Yep. And I was thinking that as I was watching the Cam Newton podcast, I'm like, I'm like, this similar shit that we was talking about. Like this, this is the conversation that I want to have with him. Yeah. It, it, it was too early because I'm still in character. Right. I, the character was still so offensive. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The character been evolving over yeah, here by yeah, way of comedy. Yeah, it has. So now he can be more received because he got a lot, he look funny. So now he's not a nigga just talking. He evolved into it. He's trying to do comedian with it. Okay, now we can kind of ah, mm -hmm. bring that motherfucker back again. Well, I'm going to tell you, as a fan of yours, I think, I think the intellectual side of you is your best suit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But you can't give that to them, homie. Uh, that's why Andre 3000 played the flute, not rap. This, this, this group is not moved by intellect. True. They move by let me see it. Yeah. You telling them about your God, they want to see how rich you living. You telling them about something, they want to know how much time you done did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got to tell this group what they want to hear so they can respect you and at least sit and talk to you so you can tell them what they need to hear. Right, right. So. If you tell them what they need to hear, they go, they go run away from you. Because mm -hmm. they ain't trying to hear that right now anyway. It's too intellectual. Mm -hmm. And you better not be intellectual mm -hmm. trying to talk to them. Man, y'all, man. You can all understand what these little niggas saying now. <laughs> so an intellectual rapper trying to rap to the mama rapper Boom! Yeah, get his ass out of here. Get his ass out of here. Yeah. For sure. Uh, you speak the language of the people. Uh, this group here speak ignorance. So I learned to use ignorance as a way to teach and engage this group. So when I get to white folks, I also use ignorance to teach and engage them. Mm -hmm. That's why I act ignorant with white folks. Because I'm telling them, hey, I'm just acting, y'all. And if y'all can't deal with me acting, y'all damn sure can't deal with them King Vaughns. I'm acting like I'm from there. I'm pretending. Them mamas that come in that school do it, they, no, nah, y'all, if y'all can't deal with me and I'm acting like this, y'all better not go to Old Black and try to tell them people how to get their life together. Y'all better not go down there in New Orleans and try to fix nothing because if you can't deal with this and I'm telling you I'm acting, but what I do is I use it as a strategy. It's a defense mechanism, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Most people won't approach me because they think I'm crazy style, man. It's brushed off. Mm -hmm. That keep 20 to 30 percent of people from fucking with me. Mm -hmm. the, the, the other ones is I see how smart you is. If you think you smart and I don't think you smart, I'm going to go ignorant. You won't get the intelligence out of me. That's why some interviews niggas don't get no intelligence. Because I can tell by the line of your questions what you want. So what I do is I be ignorant in the morning. And when I get you lost in my ignorance, I slowly walk you back to my intelligence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you can't take my intelligence, I'm going to go back to being ignorant. Right, right, right. And right. I, we, that's where we go stay. Right, right. So that's how I engage people, huh? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. I, I can see that in your work. Yeah. I can tell a lot of people be trying to challenge you too, and I don't think anyone has be, be been successful yet. Because I can give you a reason on why I said something. Some people just talking. Right. I can give you a reason on everything I said and why I'm saying it. It may not be what you think, but it, I can give you a real logical explanation. Mm -hmm. and, and, that, and it makes sense. Yep. I was yeah. gonna say the leader person sitting there scratching their head, like you know what, he he down there right. 
Yeah, so uh, I'm not just talking, homie. I I'm talking from a qualitative point of view from working in the community and having grown up in the juvenile system with kids like the King Von that have really key, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and I became friends with these guys and we're best friends today. And I didn't know their life was, I thought, I thought all kids was had it good like me, homie. Mm -hmm. I, I thought all kids woke up uh, and, and it was breakfast on the stove if mama was going to church or work. I thought all kids had that. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, homie, I, I, I didn't know uh, niggas mama smoked crack. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I learned that growing up. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I, didn't, I had no concept of people of, of crack, home. So I, I, I learned and, and I learned and developed an understanding and, and empathy for the kids who had less than me by bonding with them in the boys' home. Uh, my niggas who couldn't get visits. I would ask my mama, mama, can you call him up for visitation for Christmas so he can, mama, if, so yeah, uh, yeah, I always had a heart for, for my, for my partners that were least in me, homie. Mm -hmm. So my mother had a heart. She was a foster parent through Lena Pope home, uh, a CPS foster care system. My mother foster parent homie for, for many years. And my mother would you get the most challenging children and nurture them into goodness. So I, I watched my mother. I watched my mother would do with children what uh, white people did with Michael Vick dogs. Mm. The, the dogs that was uh, uh, raised and, and bred to fight and kill other dogs, uh, they didn't lock those dogs up and kill them. They put them in an environment. They put them in a, an environment where dogs can be loved, nurtured, trained, disciplined, and corrected. Right. Mm -hmm. And after they went, after they spent so much time in this environment, those dogs temperament change. Those became loving family dogs and they started adopting those dogs. You ain't heard about Michael Big Dogs and bitch somebody that done none of that. Why can't we take that same concept that I watched my mother do with these abused, molested children and love them back into being loving, happy children that can process their trauma, overcome it and, and, and live through it? by way of purpose. So if we do that to black children, when we want to cast them away, if we have the same compassion that we have for abused dogs, then we can heal a lot of children. Mm. Mm. So we, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts on um, visiting Chicago again? Uh, they trying to book me for a comedy show. <laughs> uh, I vowed that I would never go to Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, and I take that back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I take that back. I got people say, man, don't go. They go back though, you they go set you up. Man, I see the nigga get shot here, shot there. So people will shoot you where in Chicago. They'll shoot you in the back of the police car, going to jail. Yeah, them niggas is some fools. <laughs> uh but I think uh It's a lot more to Chicago than It's than something that, in the back sure. of my mind, homie, that tell me I got more love in Chicago than hate. You got more love than you know, for sure. It's something, listen, homie, it's something that whispers to me, mm -hmm. but I'm afraid to believe it. But yeah. it whispers to me. Yeah, I can, I can see that. It whispers to me. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh, you know, on my end, um, you know, I, I, received, I received a lot of backlash after our last interview, but at the same time, I received a lot of love as I well. I prayed for you, homie. Yeah. Uh, I cried for you. Uh, I, feel like, I feel like you were going to be hurt. I, I wouldn't go do no more interviews with you. Mm -hmm. I would tell people, man, they gonna kill that little nigga, homie. He keep interviewing me. Uh, that's why I was so passionate at the end of that video. Uh, I was cussing out Chicago for you, homie. In my spirit. Yeah, I, I would weep for you, my nigga, because I know you're a good dude. Mm -hmm. I say he a good kid. I tell everybody he's so respectful. Man, I know they'll kill you, homie, if I say the wrong thing. So, uh, I said, man, I ain't doing no more interviews with that kid, man. And then you call. I said, yeah, come on, my nigga. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because if don't nobody else deserve my spirit, homie, you do. Yeah. Uh, you're a young man that 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 can that that can appreciate it. Uh, and, and, and you listen, and you learn, and you take notes, uh, and you go research. Mm -hmm. Uh, you gonna be a great man, homie, because of that. Yeah. 
I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, I like to move with grace. You know I what see. I'm saying? I see. And I um I listen to you talk a lot of times, you know? And I've been I, I was always able to deflect the BS, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and pay attention to the message. And I like how you told Cam Newton, you know, y'all worry about my delivery, y'all worry about the wrong shit. You know, listen at these rappers and they deliveries and what they saying and they music. Y'all worried about what I'm saying in these interviews. You I, know what I'm saying? I, I spoke with Miss Dominique. Tukumon. Uh, after that interview, because I, I wanted her to watch it because she she's not on social media. Mm -hmm. So she hardly ever hears or sees anything I do if people don't call and say nothing to her. Uh, I probably call her every three months. Uh, I'm always thinking about, man, how can I help this woman? Mm -hmm. uh, she don't want charity. I, I talked to her the other day. And she said, uh, Mr. Charles, I sure appreciate you. She said, but I just want one thing. Can you help me get my son's name copyright? Mm. So I can own his name? Mm. That's hard. <laughs> mm hmm Shit, nigga, nigga, boy, nigga. Mm-hmm. That's hard. So yeah, no, nah, man, that shit took me back in the yeah. So I only call her like every 90 days, homie. Oh, yeah. uh, because I connect with her spirit. Oh, uh, and what got me now, oh, uh, nigga, I, I just looked online and his family members. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, his family members. So I said, say, homie, we got to get a name copywritten. We owe her. Nigga, we, rappers, dirt, Jay-Z, Gilly, we owe her. Hey, I wanna, and I want to say this, too. I really do respect how you've embraced Tuka's mom because you damn near the only person to do so. And like oh, you I cry with that woman. And like you said, we done heard his name smoking on Tuka so much in the raps that if you're just an uneducated fan, you think it's cool, you think it's fun. You telling your friends that you smoking on Tuka, but this is really a child that lost his life and his mom is still alive and she's still grieving. Well, the, the, the aftermath of the siblings. So his sister was affected by this where mental health issues came into play. They haven't been able to grieve in peace. Mm -hmm. So can we let them grieve in peace? Can we give her five years? Help her get a help her help her get a copy written. Uh, uh, I don't want to be the Superman. I'm asking all of us to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm asking, oh, homie, she's supposed to be getting some type of monthly stipends for something, homie. Mm -hmm. She's supposed to be getting some kind of reward from the industry collectively. We owe that to her. Because if you ever meet her, you ever sit with her, I see the same spirit of, of Fini Shakur on her. Mm. Uh, I love Mama Duck to death. Uh, Mama Duck gangster. Miss mm -hmm. Dominique graceful. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the mother in Chicago was just trying to do the best she can, move somewhere, and the environment did this. Not the conditions. Because he was at school, he wasn't wrestling. She was at home cooking food in the icebox. So he got love. So it wasn't a condition, it was the environment. Mm -hmm. Only for the environment to tell her he was just a casualty of war. Mm -hmm. So if he was, let's make it right. A light bill for her supposed to be paid every month, my nigga. Mm -hmm. A bill supposed to be lifted out every month, nigga, till she die. If that's Tuka, mama. Yeah. Yeah, man. I like just I just like how you uh because you know the fans, everybody, you know, they ignore the 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 pain from the victim side. You know what I'm saying? That's what people or they keep ridicule. Out realize, homie. That's what made me start cussing y'all out. Yeah. I walked through a house and saw a documentary about Tuka. I had been hearing his name. So nigga, I sat down, and I looked and I watched. Damn, man, for real. That's what caught my interest. So when I done the Say Cheese TV interview. Uh, I don't know, I think it may be FBG Duck or Miss Dominique. One of them said, thank you. Uh, homie, to have a nigga mother, to have an effect on, that, that touched me, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I felt the connection in. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so I started doing research on this shit on me. Mm -hmm. So I started learning. Uh, then I started meeting the other mothers, a Doby mother, uh, Le Snoop mom. mom. So I started meeting uh, all the other mothers. Right. Uh, why, why one of YMW Melly's victims' aunts reached out to me. Okay. Uh, so I started meeting victims while y'all was embracing rappers. So I'm coming. I'm coming from a whole nother angle. So mm -hmm. I'm coming up into the industry through the victims. Mm -hmm. I ain't looking at y'all like idols, nigga. I'm despising you niggas. Fuck you bitch ass. And so I'm coming up through the eyes of the victims. Out the community. Mm -hmm. So I done come through the community, went through the victims. Now I'm on the internet addressing celebrities from the victim standpoint. Yeah. And that's what everybody kept overlooking. Yeah. Nigga, I don't, uh, I love rap music, but I don't like rappers. Who are your favorite rap artists, though? Who are uh, some artists you grew up listening to? Uh, Easy e Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, MC Ren, uh, Spice One, uh, Too Short, Too Live Crew. So you like uh, a lot of West Coast rap. Uh, well, that's what I was indoctrinated with as a kid because that was the gangsterism. Right, right. Uh, I started out liking Big Daddy Kane, uh, uh. Uh, nigga like EPMD, nigga like LL Cool J, uh, uh, Special Ed, nigga like Kid and Play. That's when it was fun and dancing. Right. The culture shifted to West. Right. We couldn't really feel the DOS effects. Uh, the East Coast rapping, the Busta Rhyme fact. Nigga, the West Coast <coughs> was more of a flavor for us. Right, 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 right. Uh, as you grow up, you got, uh, uh, you got, uh, Slick Rick, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dana Dane. So we got a variety. The, the, we had hip hop. So all rappers was good mm -hmm. until NWA and them came. Mm -hmm. Then it became about these little groups of kids. Uh, from there, you got MC Breed coming in. You got Spice One coming through. Uh, uh, you got Luke and Two Liar Crew. They keeping you managed and, 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 and uh, then here come Pac. But he coming with Digital Underground. The Humpty Dance is your chance. So it should be cool to do this. Right, you right. know what I'm saying? Uh, then uh, Tupac done juice, homie. Mm -hmm. And nigga it went thug life. Mm -hmm. He got stuck in character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, that 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 one iconic man, that one iconic man, homie, uh, almost destroyed hip hop with his ego. East and West Coast beef. There was egos, homie. There was niggas fucking each other, hoes and women and shit. That that was all ego, homie. But he was more egotistical driven than all of them. Uh, he knew his power. Yeah. Like I know mine. Mm -hmm. uh, I once told uh, a young Eastern, one of Mayweather's fighters, I always remind him to protect your gift. Don't squander it. Don't get drunk. Don't get high. Work out. Mayweather protected his gift. That's why he was great at it. He protected the gift. Work hard. Train. Don't protect your gift. Uh, and Tupac didn't protect the gift. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. I've been protecting the gift, homie. Mm -hmm. I've been protecting the gift. Got to protect the gift. Yeah, uh, that's why I was able to hold on to it so long to get to here. And ah, here y'all go. Right, right. But I, 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 it was times I fumbled it mm -hmm. uh, because you feel attacked. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you angry, you 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 get in your feelings, and, and you'll fumble your gift. Yeah. Uh. Uh. I stay focused on the vision. Mm -hmm. Uh, the vision is, homie. Uh, you keep the message and the narrative focused on children. At the end of the day, a nigga make me mad. Nigga, I work with kids in real life. Nigga, fuck you, nigga. Uh, so I always, nigga, fuck them grown folks. This is about the kids. Uh, that's how I was able to protect the gift. Yeah, that's so. Man, the uh, the youth is the future. 
And I admire that about you as well, how you stay hands on with the children. You advocate for the children, you know? Where do we go from here with Charles and White coming off? Like I said, arguably your best interview. Uh, Two million in a few days, you know? I know you put up millions all the time, but uh, where do you see yourself going? You know, what, what are some new heights you're looking forward to? Oh, uh, man, I'm doing movies now. Uh, so uh, I was in a movie called uh, uh, We Out Here, and it's about the 1997 Atlanta Freak Day. Okay. Uh, so the movie is already going up for a film festival award, uh, and, and chances are it's going to win. So uh, beginning of the year, man, I'll be at some film festival awards, uh, supporting the movie, uh, speaking on the movie, doing interviews. Uh, my, my, com my, my comedy world is taking off, man. So we're doing an Underground Railroad comedy tour kicking off February 1st. Uh, I got three shows in Detroit, Martin Luther King weekend. Uh, uh, I got, I got three plus one uh, major major streaming deals on on the table. Okay. Uh, shout out to Aiden Ross and Kick. Uh, uh, after the Cam Newton interview, uh, well, a little bit before then, me and Aiden had already been talking. Mm -hmm. uh, but after Cam Newton interview, homie, so uh, yeah, we go sit back down at the table. Uh, I got an all black streaming company uh, who's telling me, uh, uh, man, we might not can't give you five million, but boy, we can show give you a big percentage in this and woo, 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 woo. And I'm saying, ooh, boy, that sounds like that motherfucking Nike deal with my, you know what I'm saying? So right, right. Uh, then I got, you know, I still got my guys from Culture TV saying, man, uh, we got 500,000 for you, man. And do so, uh, uh, I, I got, I, I got some offers now, homie. Uh, uh, shout out to Cam. He done got some calls, uh, you know, do something else with me. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so, uh, uh, I think I could. I think I'm at the starting line now. Okay. Yeah, I think I finally made it to the starting line. Uh, and now I can start my, my, my comedy career uh, because I've been fighting against the internet persona. Mm -hmm. He ain't no motherfucking comedian. All he do is talk down on black people. He hateful. He, uh, the comedian have always been off limits f for criticism, for saying, because the comedian can talk about anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The comedian can make jokes and likes of anything. He the comedian, so he's always had the pass for that. Right. Uh, well, I discovered I was a comedian on the internet, so it was hard for people to see me as a comedian because I'm on the internet. Comedian, you see what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, I was so good on the internet, uh, nigga, you can't be no better on stage. Oh, uh, he's funny on the internet, but he ain't funny on stage. Okay, that's the natural gift. Uh, as, as I continued to operate out of my natural gift, I learned the gift of comedy. I learned comedy. I learned what to do, the punchline. I learned how to write. That's how I get better. I got the gift and the talent. Once I learned, listen, I'm getting better. So, yeah, I just had my best comedy show home in Fort, Fort Lauderdale last weekend. So, or my best ever. Right. So, uh, I, I got a lot coming up. Uh, me and Aiden go start doing stuff for more inner city black kids. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna be the the, the uncle. Uh, uh, I'm gonna be the new uncle in hip hop, homie. That Snoop was to these niggas, okay. but I'm gonna be it for the young niggas. Okay. Uh, but, but I think they are. Uh, they don't want me down. Yeah, yeah, they don't really, they don't realize Unk really cool, OG kind heart. He just playing tough. He really love us. Uh, so they starting to see that now. Uh, because you can only front and fake for so long. I ain't really mean and hateful, homie. I'm just acting. So if you sit me down, uh, eventually you'll see who I really am. Yeah, it's just that not many people really sit me down and see who I am. Yeah, they rebutting the character. Well, yeah, I was noticing. Uh, I noticed when you like when you get on Instagram Live, a lot of young men tap in with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You kick it to them. They be listening to you, you know. They admire your words, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You, uh, you definitely have made a huge impact um, within the last couple years for sure. Uh, when I, uh, like I told you, you know, we brought you up to Dr. Uma, and um, the comments on that video was like, damn, they're all in favor of Charleston White. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was actually, I was actually shocked. You uh, know what I'm saying? Hey, hey homie, I, I got, I, I got, a, I, I, I respect Dr. Umar's intelligence. Uh, 
I disagree with this approach. Yeah. Uh, I see a lot of, I see, a, we, we call it high side, right? Uh, it, it's not disrespect. It's high side, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I was like, like, nigga got, he, one point in time he had, what, three, three bras that was living in the house with him. They doing the polygamy thing. Mm -hmm. Nigga, I'm, I'm really joking, but high side. Nigga, you, nigga, you don't put three bitches in the house together. You separate them hoes. Yeah, you had your three hoes in three different houses. You can't put three hoes under one roof and think them hoes ain't gonna run circles around you. They gonna team up against you. Yeah, nigga, cause they gonna be in their feelings. And at some point, sisterhood runs they feelings and emotions together mm -hmm. against you, nigga. Mm -hmm. To rule you, to manipulate you, to play on you. Hey, Teddy, nigga, no, you separate them hoes. You don't put your hoes together. So, uh, I just be saying some shit, homie, but nigga, ain't none of this shit personal. I don't know you, yeah. my nigga. Yeah. Homie, I don't, nothing nobody say about me online, I take personal. We don't know each other. So for these niggas to say, uh, man, that was disrespectful, uh, homie ain't that serious. Yeah. I think uh I think I think a podcast uh on whoever platform, if 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 the stage is with Charles White and Dr. Umar, it'll definitely uh make an impact. Well, it'll make this, a difference. Uh, this, this what I'm saying the podcast let's go pull up at a school let's go pull up at a juvenile facility let's go pull up in the project let's go pull up in the community and f with these niggas with what he know and with what i know mm -hmm. we ain't got to do it on the podcast right, right. because he worked with children and i work with children and our focus is children and black children mm -hmm. let's go out there to them children yeah. Me and him together. I like that. In a community. Talk to the mamas. Talk. Let me and him go talk to the mamas and the daddies and the kids. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't got to be a podcast. It ain't got So I'm saying, if me and him get together, let's not talk. Let's get to work. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. So if y'all going to put me and Dr. Umar together, don't put us together for, for intellectual judo. Take us to the community for a town hall meeting so we can address our people and we can receive and give to one another. Yeah. I am interested though, just before we close out, uh, can you, cause I, heard, I, I, I got a lot of comments saying that Charleston White has helped change laws. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I mentioned this on, 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 on Cam News podcast. So there's, there's, and he's been on Real Life Street Stars. There's a guy by the name of Eric Brown. And in, in, 20, in 2014, I, I became aware and introduced to a law in America called juvenile life without parole. Okay. I was sentenced in Texas where we don't have juvenile life. We have what they call the Texas Juvenile Determined Sentencing Law where a kid can be sentenced up to 40 years for a violent crime, right? So we got 40 years. I know a lot of niggas with 40 years at 12, 13. You know, a lot of niggas with 30 years, I had never met a kid with life. So in 2014, I, I became a, a part of a, of, a, of a group called Campaign Fair Sentencing for Youth based out of Washington, D.C. I became a part of that group and I became a member of a group called ICANN, Incarcerated Children's Advocacy Network. I was an incarcerated children. But when I joined this group, I was one of the only kids who had been sentenced to life. I had 12 years. Nigga, all these other kids from around America had life without parole at 14, 15, 12, 13. I'm like, what? Nigga, nobody in 2014, nigga, we didn't know that they were sentenced a 12 year old or 13 year old kid to life without parole. Nigga, I couldn't believe that. So this is the start of my youth advocacy. So. I'm saying, well, shit, nigga. I thought Dewberry was fucked up for doing all that motherfucking time, nigga. He was fortunate. So I started looking at me and my niggas as being fortunate, homie. And my niggas them did 22 years, 25 years, 26 years. Yeah. But they had an out date. They wasn't sentenced to die as children. Can you imagine to be sentenced to die in prison as a child? You can't even comprehend it because your mind don't allow you. Brain development, right? So that changed my whole life. Because I found out that it was only three countries on this entire planet that was sentenced a kid to die in prison. America, Sudan, and North Korea. So I became a part of these two groups along with uh, attorneys, 
over 50 U.S. congressional members, uh, lobbyists, athletes, uh, people from Chicago, my man Xavier, uh, Eric Alexander, man, George Toka, uh, Sarah Cruz, man, I'm talking about, I can go on and on, homie. Uh, and every year, for almost three years, we would go to Washington, D.C. and do a national convening. And we would spend a week on Capitol Hill going through congressional halls, legislation, and meet with the congressional members, uh, petitioning them and, and advocating for them to push this bill through Congress to abolish juvenile life without parole in America. And in 2016, we became successful with that by way of submitting a amicus brief to the Supreme Court. So it was four of us whose stories uh, who were submitted to the Supreme Court, uh, mine, Eric Alexander's, uh, Xavier's, Anthony Johnson, uh, I can't think of my other man's name. Uh, so our names is, is noted uh, on this law, uh, the Miller versus Graham. So this kid, Eric Brown, was sentenced to life without parole plus 30 years at the age of 16 in Angola. So he's in Angola with, with Boosie, C. Murder, Alt Mac, and he got life without plus 30 at 16 years old for a crime he didn't commit. He did over 25 years. So they are in there also working on this law. They're trying to get their family and friends in the community to help support this law, and they couldn't get no support. I didn't know I would ever meet that kid. He seen my name on the amicus brief. He never knew he would meet me. Years later, nigga, we get out and run into each other. I said, man, I remember you one of them kids I worked on in law. He said, man, I saw your name. So he's telling people, yeah, Charleston really worked on this law. Uh, if you Google my name, Charleston White, you would find that. Or if you Google Charleston White, ABA Journal. It was on the front page of the American Bar Association Journal. Talking about second chances. Mm -hmm. I was highlighted as the juvenile who was given the second chances on the front page of the Mar American Bar Association Journal. Homie, I done a news study on this fatherlessness in America with News 21. Homie, you know how big that is? Every journalist in the world is Walter Conkright. Nigga, they selected me to do a study. It's in a notation. Motherfucker won't read. The reason they won't read is because all of my antic videos is pushed to the front of the algorithm and all of my community work is pushed on the fourth or the third page. It's designed by that because the algorithm embraced negativity. Mm -hmm. So you'll see all my negative video before you see my community work. So you'll see that in 2016, I took over 50 some kids who had killed somebody when they was kids. I took them back to the same institution that we was locked up at. And I fed the entire institution. It was like our class reunion. They invited old staff, Greg Abbott, uh, 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 sen man, uh, senators came out, newspapers, the Texas Tribune. Nigga, I did that all by myself. And I fed the whole facility out of my pocket. The staff and the students. What makes community service so important to your heart? Uh, uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's a conviction. Uh, I'm convicted by, by what I used to do wrong uh, and delinquent, right? Uh, we broke windows. Uh, we stole cars. We broke in people's houses. Uh, we knocked over mailboxes. Uh, we beat up kids that we didn't know just because they was in the neighborhood, because they were new. So we did a lot of things intentionally wrong in our youth with our undeveloped brain. But we thought this was cool, it was fun, and it exciting just to tear up things in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Well, when I grew up to become a man, my concept changed. Nigga, I'm gonna fix what's in the neighborhood, homie. That's the conviction of a man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, homie, I don't, I, don't, I don't pee right here because this gonna make you stink. We gonna go over there in them bushes away. Man, we, nah, I'm so, uh, those was my convictions as, as I was growing up to become a man, a father. So my children is what me, what make me think about community service because they're in the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I'm seeing kids doing something, I'm hoping someone else would do what I'm doing with these kids. Come on, homie, y'all chill. No, nah, man, don't y'all do that. Say, man, y'all put that back. Say, man, y'all go back and apologize to that Asian woman. 
No, no, you don't come in here. No, no matter. I, I'm gonna pay for them. Listen, when you see them right here, you tell me what they did. What they? I'm gonna pay for it. Don't y'all steal a thing? Y'all come over here and goddamn Asian woman stole nigga. Y'all come over there and come pick up trash and earn you some money. Don't come over here stealing, nigga. And let the Asian woman see me say that. And her man, here you go. But online, you'll think I hate Asian people. Mm. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show black people that, for one, that they are hypocritical. I wanted to use words on the internet because I knew my real life action superseded me saying whatever. So I can come on here and say whatever. I'm just saying it. I hadn't done it. You come and ask these people, man, that nigga don't do none of that. Man, that nigga, ooh. So I can come and say it because actions still do speak louder than words. It just take a little longer for people to pay attention, but it still do. Yeah. Words stick, though. But actions are forever. You'll forget what a motherfucker said. Yeah, it depends on what they said. Man, shit, let it go long enough. You might twist at what they said. Right. But I ain't say that. You lying now. You did say that. But you can't twist out what they did. Uh-uh. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Goddamn right. Mm. Shit. <laughs> it's either that it's e they say it's easier to ask for permission than to ask, ask for forgiveness. forgiveness. Mm hmm mm hmm So actions is everything, homie. Yeah. Because we say a lot of things to our children, but our actions reflect different. So just remember that when you're looking at me. When you're judging me by what I'm saying and overlooking what I'm doing, remember, you do the exact same things to your children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they look at you like you're looking at me. They just can't say it. They lose faith in you. They start to resent you secretly. So how would you, how would you recommend a listener to grasp the concept of your message if you you would just say anything at any given time it's for entertainment purposes only uh by now you should be able to decipher what's what nigga it's been a serious interview now i've thrown in some shit here and there but for the most part nigga mm -hmm. it's a message in this shit right you can tell when i'm bullshitting mm -hmm. yeah i'm mm -hmm. go uh, yeah i go do yeah you can tell mm -hmm. uh when i'm serious i'm subtle my voice is, yeah, when I'm passionate, my voice go up and down. Mm -hmm. When I'm bullshitting, you can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can tell, because I'm going to go, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm going to do all that kind of shit, because I'm trying to think the bullshit to spew out, and I'm buying time to think. What you, um, what you list um, disrespecting King Von as your claim to fame? Mm -mm. Uh... Uh, Tuka was. Okay. Because that's what led to me ultimately saying King Von. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 it was Tuka in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, that that catapulted me uh, into the industry. And I, I, I want to thank his mother for having him. Uh, because God used him to usher me before the people. His spirit and I remember her saying, uh, she said, Mr. Charles, my baby knew you was gonna be taken up and, and trying to look out for him and his mama. How many women didn't even know me? Right. But that one was in my spirit. Yeah. Yeah, that one was in my spirit. Uh, so yeah, yeah, nah, homie. Uh, but just, uh -oh, just. Should Chicago, Chicago have done more for me in my life than, than the Crip and Blood gang banging did. Mm -hmm. Because when I was playing Crip and Blood, we was at war with the, with the BGDs and, and the gangster disciples and, and, and the institution. And uh, I stole their literature. And nigga, them niggas fight over that literature shit. You hear me? Man, them niggas kill behind that shit. And I stole them niggas literature. And it elevated my mind. Mm -hmm. it, 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 I, I, I didn't know uh, those six point stars and principal homie, uh, homie, that shit elevated. I was a teen. So I would study that shit in, in the midst of listening to Tupac music from almost 17 to 21. So, nigga, I'm really growth and development. That's how I was able to quit gangbanging. It, it, it gave me a, a concept of knowledge 
and it gave me a thirst for knowledge because I didn't know gangsters had knowledge until I got their literature. Uh, Larry, Larry Hoover is a candle that's been put in the closet for a long time, homie, but he, he left some jewels in, in that literature. Uh, that literature should be taken to Congress. Congress should look at Larry Hoover's literature in growth and development and develop curriculum for young black children uh, in, in inner cities that's having behavioral problems and make that an alternative program to alternative schools. His growth and development program. Mm. It changed me, homie, when I wanted to be murderous in my heart. I wanted to jump on other black dudes for no reason at all. And I couldn't even explain it just for the color. Uh, I was lost and, and, and that gave me a guide. It, it, it really gave me a moral guide. So I used to secretly sit back and look at them niggas, Greg Henry, and, 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 and secretly be jealous because them niggas seemed smart. We were bullies. Uh, them niggas were getting jobs in the cafeteria. Uh, we were crashing out going to lock up with that crib shit. Them niggas had knowledge to go get trades. And uh, yeah, shout out to that nigga Greg Henry. Uh, he was a real quiet nigga. I thought he was weak because he didn't fight. Mm -hmm. But he was their leader. And he made sure all them niggas was taught. In hindsight, uh, they was a little bit more fly than us. Yeah, we was a bunch of gorillas and monkeys. Uh, them niggas were some sharp orangutans. Yeah. Yeah. You feel like uh so so you say Tuka in Chicago has helped Tuka Chicago and Larry Hoover's growth and development literature. Okay. So 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 even though the world look at Charleston White like he hates Chicago, he always disrespected Chicago, Chicago is low key part of the reason why we even sitting down talking to Charleston White. Uh Chicago is part of the reason Charleston is, is such an articulate, uh educated young man because he grabbed hold to Chicago's literature. Uh, I grew up in a boy's home, homie, so that's all I was doing was read. Mm -hmm. uh, nigga, once you get all the Crip literature, the, well, not the literature, once you get the Crip history, the Tukey, the Raymond, the 1969, right. homie, that wasn't really nothing. The growth and development had knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Just those words alone, homie, elevate your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I do get on the internet, I secretly got a fascination and an admiration. That's why you never heard me say nothing about it in the beginning. Nor California. So I had a secret admiration for these two states. Well, I lived in L.A., so I got to see that shit up close and personal. It was easy to say, man, fuck that shit. Nigga, them niggas, man, them niggas, what? I would never say nothing about Chicago. I was on them California niggas' ass. I didn't know Chicago was drilling like that. I thought it was still growth and development. I didn't know BDs and GDE was against each other. Nigga, that shit, what? Right. I didn't know that. Because they were once one. Mm -hmm. The folk nation. It was, nigga, what? So, uh, uh, nigga in spirit. Nigga, I got Larry. So basically, you GD, that's what you're saying right in now. In spirit, I got Larry <laughs> Hoover's teaching, my nigga. <laughs> That's take all, it how you want to take it. That's all I've been I hearing. I professed and confessed <laughs> that I stole the, the folk niggas literature playing Road to 60 Crip, trying to get at them niggas, and nigga, it changed my mind. So I stole, I, it changed my mind. So in spirit, nigga, Larry Hoover's teachings helped me elevate from a, a gang-banging boy's mind to try to mature from 18, 19, 20, 21, and I came home without a gang-banger's mind, homie. I came back with a community mind. I've been involved in politics. Where I get that from? Where I, 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 where I, where I get that from? Larry Spirit. Mm. Feeding the community, nonprofits. Where did I get that from? Larry Spirit. Not to, I, I didn't learn it nowhere else, homie. It was deposited into the teachings. It just lay dormant until my mind got there. My mind had to develop. But nigga, these were teachings that I read and studied to be spiteful. And look what it did. Yeah. So that's why you heard me addressing y'all, nigga. Because y'all going against what I know was right. And I thought y'all niggas was right up there, homie. I used to love, man. I thought y'all niggas were really with that growth. Nah, I mean, I was heartbroken. Mm -hmm. If we go be honest. Mm -hmm. 
And I was heartbroken, homie. Yeah. So that's why I ran to them mothers, homie. In spirit. Un unknowingly. That's why the connection was so strong. Nigga, I used to write for Larry Hoover to be free. I wrote the print several times. Nigga, I got a letter up there for him. Detailed, descriptive, long. How he, we could benefit from him. How he can stop youth violence and impact gang violence if we can hear his voice. Mm -hmm. Let us hear his voice one time before he die. Mm -hmm. For sure that. Amen. Let him talk to us like y'all let Tukey talk to us. It can change a lot. What black politician, what black celebrity. Man, I don't want to talk, man. Fuck this. Yeah, I'll yeah, get mad at these niggas again. Political prisoners. Him and Jeff There's two motherfuckers y'all make me mad about, nigga. Tamir Rice and Larry Hoover. Mm -hmm. Tamir Rice and Larry Hoover. Mm -hmm. What is it about Tamir Rice? He baby Tamir Rice. He was a kid like me, nigga, that knew how to play by himself at the park and play cops and robbers, play football by himself. He wasn't bothering nobody. And some motherfucker looked outside and said there was a man at the park with a gun. He was a kid playing by himself. The police wasn't there a minute and a half and killed that baby. Pulled right up, jumped out the car, boom, boom. Run over there, put handcuffs on him. A minute, minute and a half. Free, put your weapon down, none of that. And we blinked twice and went on about our business. Mm. We don't have no statute for him. We don't have no scholarship program for him. Uh, uh, we don't have no uh, uh, Tamir Rice Day. Nigga, we don't have nothing for him, homie. But we ran with Dion. But we ran with Dion to the white folks' school. So, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah, that's, yeah. Some, that's something you you and Dr. Umar share in common. Y'all hate the fact that Dion Sanders went to that school. Uh, uh, we share a lot in common. Yeah, for sure, uh, y'all do, though. We just disagree in our, in our methods and our ways. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we way more alike uh, than we are uh, not alike. But so Dion bogus for going to that school though, huh? She like a motherfucker. <laughs> uh, as a man and father, he not. We bogus for going with him. Okay. Man, when you got kids, and you say, "Man, I want my son to go," so his 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 as a father and as a man of the house to get more money. He did what any man to, what would do to, to provide. Right. Culturally, we was wrong for going with him. Okay. And taking all of our money and power and support over there. We could support him from afar. Good job, Cowboy. You're doing good over there in Colorado. Right. And stayed off them sidelines. Yeah, everybody ran to the Colorado sidelines. When he was winning. When he was winning. And that was just in the beginning of the season. When they beat TCU, they thought he was on, boy. Mm -hmm. They didn't stand over there when he was losing. Mm -hmm. To let them people know we still standing with him, y'all. Man, I ain't heard nothing about Colorado. I looked up, I saw their record was like four and seven or and four boy, and eight. And lost his woman, too. Wow. I ain't saying nothing else about that man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah, man, I ain't saying nothing else about that man. Uh, uh, he's stronger than me. Yeah, losing record, uh, lost my woman. I'm quitting the football. I'm going back to Jackson State. Nigga, I'm finna go back to what me and Michael Irvin were doing, fucking them hoes in the locker room, blowing cocaine. Fuck this shit, I'm giving up. I'm <laughs> taking a break for a few years. I'll get back later. Homie, too much coming up against a nigga mm -hmm. just to coach football. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's Dion though. He taking it, and he taking it well. Uh, yeah, time. yeah, yeah. I salute him. Uh, he ain't being, he ain't breaking, he ain't folded. Uh, yeah, I salute him for that. Uh, but he's still wrong for being over there. But yeah, I, I, I salute him for his tenacity, uh, his, his strength and his wherewithal, uh, and his in in his consistency, attitude of positivity. 
uh, no matter what's being thrown before him. So you have to admire that about him. Yeah. I know I do. Yeah. yeah. What's your thoughts on um, P. Diddy current situation? Man, I've been told y'all that nigga was a sick motherfucker. Uh, any nigga dance around and bounce around much as he do with sunglasses on at nighttime, hiding something. Motherfucker wear sunglasses on all the time. That's the window to your soul. You hiding them eyes for a reason, nigga. And if you look in the eye long enough and close enough, you can see that dark shit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that nigga. Uh, he, reached that, he reached that settlement pretty fast. Uh, within 24 hours, mm -hmm. I heard it was 100 million, but ain't nobody really gave no disclosure. Mm. Uh, well, she was asked for 30 million once. He paid extra. Mm. Nigga, she knows some shit. Uh, but uh, the fact that uh, he not getting no shame right. for snatching up a 19-year-old girl, uh, putting them drugs in her life, sex trafficking her, beating her, uh, doing all kind of shit. When it had her titties put in and had the titties took out, uh, man, that nigga was sick. Uh, where did he learn that behavior from? His daddy and mama. Mm. Nigga, that's that homie. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, nah, homie, you, you, you learn that shit from somewhere. Uh, to be able to, homie, to beat women, how that nigga say that he was beating them hoes, beating them under cars, and how she was laying on that motherfucking floor in that thing. He said, babe, get up. Homie, uh, yeah, yeah, that's why you don't trust no nigga like him who smile that much. He smiled too much. And nigga, my uncle told me a black man that smiled too much. There's two things about him. You can't trust him or you're a jive turkey. That's why I be telling me, quit smiling so much. Nigga, nobody trust no smiling ass black man. Nigga gonna think you're weak. <laughs> or you a jive turkey. Uh, so, <laughs> I just know, my nigga, uh, you get far away from God with a billion dollars. I can imagine. Yeah, a billion dollars is a long fall from God. We think a nigga going up with a billion. A billion dollars is a long fall from God, my nigga. Mm -hmm. Say money is the root of all evil. No, no, it's not. For the love, love of, of money, money is the, is the root, root to all evil. Yep. Because in Ecclesiastes, <laughs> it says money answereth all things, nigga. Yeah. So for the love of, of money. money. Right. And then it says money answereth all things. So get you some. Yeah. We talked about that in the, in the first interview. Yeah. <laughs> Well, man, we 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 ain't going go, we ain't go drag it no longer, uh, Mr. Charleston White. You got a um, you you got a message to the youth. You can leave. You can leave with us tonight. Uh, 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 for, uh forgive your parents for what you think they did or didn't do, or what they should or shouldn't have did. Uh, Whatever has happened to you as a child, whether it's good or bad, abuse, neglect, molestation, no matter what it was, it's not your fault. You didn't ask to come here. You didn't ask to be born. You were just born into some situations and circumstances, conditions, and environment that you ain't got no control over. But what you do got control over is how you feel, what you think, and what you respond to those thoughts and feelings, which is your choices. Make great choices and better choices and right choices. Y'all have a good night. <laughs> That's it. Oh man. Uh, they gonna be a bad moment. DJ, you go crazy.